Well, hello, everybody. We are live. Welcome to What Had Happened Was. Yeah, yeah, I did it. Yeah, yeah. I, I still, you know, I, I'm, I'm promised for next year. Well, I should say that. I'm going to work on getting the, adding in the music and all the other stuff so that we can have our cool theme yeah. song here, too. Um, but, but for yeah, those listening to the it. audio broadcast, yes, I'm sorry it's not there, but I will add it in. But welcome to What Had Happened Was, uh, episode 46. I'm Karen Bryant. I am Angela Overkill Hill. Hello. <gasps> and, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I got like this is popping up on my on my like thing, and I'm like, oh, what are these things popping up? Oh wait, are they? Are you getting comments? Or because I'm getting some comments. I oh, know, just like uh, windows and stuff. I'm like, ah, ah, oh, trying yeah, to put yeah, out close, fires. Close so out all the other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, What's up? What uh, we have Dane here at? and, uh, and Gonzalez. <laughs> yeah, and I know you know the cool thing is like we were saying we can see the uh, the um, the comments and things, but uh, yeah. So the last show of the year, and um, you know, and I, you know, a lot of the other shows and everything they're doing like the formal lists and the this and that. I didn't know if we just kind of wanted to wrap and talk to people and see you know what they thought of the year. I think you want to wrap more than anyone. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> with I your do. um with your falafel mafia song oh, like no. did you guys ever get together and do another one do a sequel we haven't done it and i know you uh, talk, we should do it like you you can be in one like we i i don't know if i worked with Bilal again i don't have the bars that you and Bilal do <laughs> well, i wrote the bars Bilal, oh, i love it okay a lot of Bilal was not that great at delivering the bars the okay bars. okay but the funny thing is is then he said to me he goes um he goes uh he, he tells me afterwards, he's like, oh, I just was going to like dance in the background or whatever. I was like, whoa, oh, but you should have said that. Cause like I, there was a couple times where I was like, well, he doesn't have any uh, flow. Um, I really want to see if he's a better dancer than he is a rapper. Yeah. Well, yeah. We got to so, see that happen. I, I feel like if we do a falafel mafia, you and I, uh, I have a feeling it, you know, the moves and the, and the flow might be better, but you know, a little bit, so, a little bit. <laughs> fun we we were crying laughing doing that thing it was so silly if people haven't seen uh, it the channel here, you should watch it it was really funny that's um, awesome see if we do a rap video we gotta have some guys in the background twerking like that. oh for sure otherwise i'm not doing it i'm not doing it we need to have some people i know you got your boy dean he's always down for a fun yes. video like get your boys on there to give us a little a little action <laughs> for sure well especially to it for it and if adam comes too we can get him in the background so you you know yeah oh he's he would never you got to get him nice and drunk on scotch first okay okay <laughs> get those, that scottish rap move in the background like i don't even know uh but yeah no, we, for sure like if, if we're working we get like anthony and rashad and stuff like that yeah yeah we, that'd, be, that'd be a lot of fun yeah, that would be. I can see Rashad getting down to and Anthony. I feel like you oh, got yeah. some like two step swagger going on. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling Anthony strikes me as the kind of guy that in the uh, uh, in the club that just kind of does the head bob and kind of looks around. And you're like the girls are probably doing all the work around him. You know? What yeah, I mean? but he's he just, just like, does like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just pushes the head down with the drink in the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, definitely that, his move at yeah, the totally. high school uh i bet, <laughs> high I, school bet. Dance. <laughs> I bet um yeah 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 so that's cool so um you know we uh i know we have some comments here um uh duty is saying you know last fight you got robbed for for folk oh what's up oh. wax speaking of love much love from scotland i don't know if baz knows that your husband is scottish Yes, my husband is Scottish. Adam Blair Pride. Look him up. No, don't look. I don't. He didn't. I don't know <laughs> what you would see. I think. Oh, maybe his art gallery show. We're both art school grads. We met yeah. in uh, in Japan on a student exchange, and then uh, after we both graduated our art schools, he came and moved out to New York, and that's our backstory. So. It's Aww. it's kind of it's kind of a love story, a very that's nice. that's cute nice. love story that I you know it is. <laughs> and I actually was just watching today. I am laying in bed watching the uh, the Today Show because apparently I'm that's what I do now. Um, but they oh, wow. were about, about Scottish castles, and they were talking about climate change. 
unfortunately <laughs> affecting the Scottish ca uh, castles Dang. and things, um, which was a bummer. So there, anyway, it was an interesting story, not about <laughs> MMA, but which is what people not about, about all about, about Scotland. Today. That's all we talk <laughs> about is <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> um, oh, uh, oh, yes, That's and Jake Pocket. Falafel Mafia is better than Gina Gee, which we have talked about on this yeah. show. We have talked about Gina Gee. Uh, Gina it, Gee is a classic, though. I feel like it's one of those cult classics that yes. are famous because they don't realize how funny they are. <laughs> right, at the time. And they think it's like, yeah. So maybe, maybe Falafel Mafia will end up being like that. Uh, <laughs> you know, look at it. Bilal keeps winning the way he's winning. Yo. A video is going to be worth something. I tell you what, you know, that that actually is, a, is something interesting to talk about. You know, I think a lot of people, myself included, really thought that, you know, Wonder Boy was going to have a better performance against uh, mm -hmm. Bilal and that it was going to be tough, uh, tougher, a tougher fight for Bilal. But I do think, you know, if we're talking about the whole year in MMA, I think he's one of the guys that's had a good year. You know, the Leon thing didn't go his way, but he beat Damian Maya and wonder boy this year i mean like that was that was that was a good year for him he got some reps in at the desk like yeah. Bilal is one of those guys that i think you know reluctantly people are gonna you know his 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 comment or his nickname you know remember the name but mm -hmm. people maybe really have to start giving him a little more credit yeah he's i think it's um his style is very workmanlike and he goes in there and he just uh, executes a perfect game plan like when he's on he's so on and I think because he's missing like the big flashy moments then people aren't as like big on him or just aren't like uh, talking about him kind of similar to Leon Edwards nobody's talking about Leon Ever Edwards because he's such a technician and he's very measured and he wins in incredible ways but there's nothing big or no big risky moment that people get to ooh and awe about like uh, as opposed to like a mass for all so mm -hmm. you know just because people aren't paying attention doesn't mean that it's a bad thing if anything is it's cool because you get to sneak in under the radar you're building yourself up you're fighting slightly more and slightly more um more difficult opponents as opposed to just jumping the line and getting someone you're not ready for. Like what happened with uh, Sean O'Malley, in my opinion, he just like jumped up to a ranked guy who was just on his way to the top already. Mm -hmm. And he still needed to get a little bit more time with uh, lesser opposition. So, um, so it's great for Bilal. I think this is the perfect way to do it. Just slowly work your way up. And then I feel like in the next fight or two he's going to be fighting for the title it's just it's kind of bogged up at the top because mm -hmm. you know we have all these fights booked already but i think he's going to be up in 2022 for sure and the interesting thing about him too and when you talk about his style you know there's a guy named colby covington that's kind of a lot the same right yeah Efficient, exactly workman, a, a, oh a, a, my a, goodness thank you nice. <laughs> yes Yay, a um, you know what? Oh wow, look how fancy! Wow, well, look, look at, at it. Can you guys see all the sparkles? Yeah. It looks oh my very God. nice. Ridiculous. I'll take one. Too. <laughs> yeah, Adam, uh, Karen wants one. <laughs> yeah, when we get those teleporters, that's going to be pretty cool. Um, or like a, for me, I'm a big old Star Trek, it'd be like Earl Grey. Yeah. Hunt. Um, and then the <laughs> card fan, but yeah, but no, so you know, Bilal has actually been calling out Colby. That's a fight stylistically that could be interesting to see. And he legitimately, Bilal legitimately can't stand Colby. He's a guy that oh, you know, I didn't know Bilal that. doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't swear. If you notice in his post fight speech after he was like, get the fudge out of here with this stuff. And even when, <laughs> him, if you've worked with him, like he doesn't swear and he's, you know, obviously a man of faith and all that, but he legit does not like Colby and hmm. would really like to punch him in the face. And I think that would be an entertaining fight. You know, it's a big deal when you get someone who doesn't swear to use one of their um one of their uh stand in swear words. That's how you know <laughs> you done pissed him off. You get the fudge out of here with that. Yeah, get the fudge out of here. Quit being nutty over here. <laughs> shut the front door. I do love Yeah. That. I love shut the front door. Poo. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, yeah, that that's a good fight. I know him and um and Strickland too, but they're in different weight classes, right? Or yeah, Strickland. Well, Strickland's Strickland eighty-five. Was, yeah, he was seventy, and then he went up to eighty-five. Yeah, mm. and he's a he's a big guy, so he was yeah. massive at, at seventy. Yeah, so that's all talk. Yeah, you don't. Think yeah, I don't know happen. that that'll really happen. I don't know that that'll really happen. 
Um, but, you know, Damien is also saying that Bilal is one of the guys that is willing to take on Hamzat. And, you know, Hamzat mm -hmm. is another one of these guys that, you know, even though we didn't really get to see him this year, that like he's a figure in the whole thing. Like everybody still talks about him. He came on the yeah. scene so incredibly. And then mm -hmm. he's still kind of this boogeyman, even though he got really sick and what hasn't fought, you know, like. I, I, I like that I'm down with Kamzat too. I like him. I think he's exciting. I think he's going to be interesting to watch in the next year. And I do think, honestly, though, I think he is really good. I know a lot of people are like, oh, he's just been fighting cams. And I'm like, I think he's really good. Uh-oh, did we lose Angie? Oh, she froze up. Oh, no, folks. Well, you know, hey, I'm gonna, yeah. oh, there you are. I was going to say, I know you said you were, you guys had some service outages uh, yeah. in the neighborhood, which, which stinks. But no, I was just saying that I think, you know, Hamzat is actually really good. He's not just a scary guy who fought cans. I think he's actually really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think that's the scariest part about him is the unknown. Like, we don't know how good he is here, how good he is there. He hasn't shown any blemishes he fought long enough, you know, so that's going to be the most interesting thing is who's going to be the first person to take a distance and show some wrinkles in his game areas that may not be as scary as they see in our head, our imagination. Um, but until it happens, going to be this boogeyman that nobody uh, that nobody is going to be excited about fighting, <laughs> you know, right. not unless they below him and they're trying to name for themselves and right. those guys that's gonna take out super easy i think yeah no it's gonna it's gonna be tough so you know you are you are a little blurry you're like a on a on a, on a commodore 8-bit uh, or whatever right now uh, 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 um oh. hopefully it hopefully oh. it, it improves but yeah so uh because now you're kind of glitchy again oh now you're back i don't know if you can tell but on mine you look a little blurry so mm -hmm. folks just kind of bear with us here angie warned me before the show that she's yeah. having some some service issues, but yeah, um, let me see what it's looking like on the on the screen. Yeah, but maybe you could maybe or just try your hotspot or whatever. So Simon Long is saying, "How many Scots here? Greeting from Edinburgh." So here's the thing, Simon. You know, Angie's husband is, is Scottish, and there's some Scottish people here in the in the chat. I'm also I'm actually part Scottish. Um, I'm a uh, I'm a Walker uh, on my mom's uh, Jamaican side, and so that is actually a Scottish name. As I'm sure you know. So I'm uh, part Scottish as well. So apparently there's a bunch of Scots here. Uh, yeah, my, it's your cocktail. My mom is actually in the chat, folks. So she said your cocktail. <laughs> Everything was great until Adam brought in the cocktail. Maybe it's got some. Uh, I know. I don't know. Is it still uh, blurred? Yeah, you're still I blurry. Know. The thing is, is you're having such a fantastic hair day. This was like a, we need <laughs> to get a hair sponsorship in 2022 because the, the the, the stuff is 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 kind of popping, but yeah, you're kind of like going in and out and freezing. Um, Dang. Yeah, I'm or not sure. looking kind of oh no, kind of, kind of blurry. Yeah. Um, Stupid, all right, uh, Davinda De Silva. We also have Barbados in the house, or as I like to say, Barbados, uh, which is always kind of funny, but of course it's Barbados. You know, we're just kidding around here. Okay, well, so you know, Andy, while you are working on your system here, I listen, Lucifer Terax. I'm on an Ethernet. I got a brand new modem. My modem actually had died a couple weeks ago and um, unbeknownst to me. And when I called them to fix it and everything, they were like, oh yeah, no, your modem's trash. So, uh, so I have a new one. So hopefully, oh, there she is. So yeah, I don't think it's me, but uh, do you have a hotspot? Can you try a hotspot? Yeah, I'm done. Uh, yeah. Let's okay. See. So let me just see if there's some other questions here. Okay. So listen, um, I did want to ask you, you know, I'm trying to look here, looking back on some of the things, but I don't know if you can hear me. So maybe I'll just talk to um, a couple. Okay, yeah, Joe Bozo was mentioning uh, that Neil Magny was also willing to fight Kamza. Yeah, that was another person that was just like, oh, I'll fight him too. But then, you know, everyone's like, oh, nobody wants to fight Kamza. And he's like, yeah, no, I I'm ready to fight him. So I would, I, I don't know, we saw Neil a few weeks ago uh, out at the, um, at the high rollers thing. And yeah, he's looking for a fight. He wanted to fight him in December, didn't get it. And was saying that he was actively trying to get a fight and didn't have one. So yeah, 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 yeah. So are you there? Um, apps. <laughs> uh, well, it's I can so blurry. You. Oh, yeah, you can so hear blurry. me, but. I can hear you, but yeah, it's just that, like your screen sometimes freezes up or you're blurry, yeah. but we can hear you. 
Yeah, that's the front. I'll just hang out in the cut and uh, keep talking. So people know I'm here. Well, that's the whole thing. Yeah. At, least we, at least we do. I'll, I'll also put this out on audio. Uh, but yeah, so, <laughs> so, so listen. So, okay. So this year, I also think um, it was a great year for, in terms of if we're talking about getting respect and Bilal getting respect, like, you know, and we've said this on multiple shows here, uh, how big of a fan I am of Charles Oliveira. And I do think he was a person that a lot of time didn't get enough respect. And I think now, maybe after this other title defense, with the amount that people love Dustin and the um, the level to which, okay, you're back now, you're looking good. Uh, yeah. The level to hey. which people, yeah, I think Dustin is so good for him to be, you know, taken out like that by Charles and you know, the other okay. stuff that we've, yeah, you're looking good now, you look back to normal. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Cool. So, uh, yeah. So I think Charles is another person this year that yeah. maybe finally got some of the respect that I think he was due. Um, yeah. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> I was totally trying to uh, listen and not uh, fix whatever that was. <laughs> no, no, no. It's good. But I think it's, it's good. good. I think it's good. Um, yeah. yeah no. um, yes. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if you, I mean, I know I'm a much bigger Oliveira fan than you, but, uh, Oh I yes. Awesome. <laughs> I just think he's awesome. Okay. So what, uh, was there anything to you that, okay. So here's something that like, for example, UFC 260 back in March, that was Miocic versus Ngannou too. Like there was a oh. lot of fights this year. I kind of don't remember that one. Yeah. Like I do um. and I don't. You know, it's it was it was a nasty knockout, right? Like what what round so. did happen? And I think Hold I up. think so. Here, I mean, look. So, nah. so <laughs> that's the thing about it. And you know, Stipe is one of these guys that we haven't seen. So Francis, yeah, it was a second round knockout, fifty two seconds into the second round. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. that was the same. Oh, that was the same night. Vicente Luque beat T Wood. That was the same night. Oh, um, there was too much going on. There was too much. Go yeah, there was too <laughs> much too going much. on. There was, was too hard. much going on. It was hard to, but, you know, uh, ooh, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, so Stipe is ooh, one of those the guys. Hair. That, yeah. That's <laughs> what I remember. Stipe's hair going, ch, ch, ch. Yeah. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah. Stipe, poor guy. Yeah, that was tough. But I don't know if Stipe's coming back to fight. You know, that's one of those people when, we're, when you were talking about the log jam at the top of the welterweight division, mm -hmm. there kind of is one. You know, obviously the two heavyweights are going to fight here, um, you know, in a couple weeks here in L.A. But Stipe is one of those guys that people are like, well, I wouldn't mind that fight. You know, I know Derek was kind of thinking about him. I don't know who Stipe is going to fight or if he's just going to wait for the winner of the title fight. But, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know where he is, if he's coming back or not. Yeah, I think he's a little butthurt that nobody's being, um, nobody's considering him. Like every, well, it's but they are though. They're, I mean, they're considering. They want that people are calling him out. He's been called out. I'm saying, but he, he I guess, well, just wants to talk about it. yeah, the title fight. That's what I mean. The for the title fights or for yeah. like the interim title fights or anything. Right. He's right. he's annoyed that no one considered him when it was oh not Ngannou when it was a uh, gone versus Derek Lewis. He's like, yeah. You know, I'm right here, guys. What what's going on? Like, I didn't even get a phone call. So I think, yeah, yeah I think I think if they're not calling him for a title shot, what he feels like, what's the point? Kind of similar to the position Joanna took. Mm -hmm. um, she's like, you know, I don't care that they're taking me off the rankings because I deserve a title fight, and that's it. I've been at the top for however long. If I'm fighting someone who doesn't make sense, who doesn't get me the title fight. Why am I fighting? So I definitely understand that position, um, especially after you grinded to get there or to stay up there for a long time. Stipe was the had the most um, the most defenses in heavyweight, which is a big deal because. Dude, like heavyweights, they it's a rotating door, you know. As yeah. everyone, I think the most defenses before were like two or three, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There wasn't a lot, exactly. Yeah, he he had the most because he had three, and that's crazy. But it shows how talented he was, and it it's it's a shame that he wasn't considered. I feel like he he's one of those champions like uh, Demetrius Johnson, who never really were celebrated while they were champions. It, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even though people would go, oh, they're the best at this and that, people weren't super excited about them for whatever reason. Well, I think with Stipe, unfortunately, it's 
it's his reluctance to play the game of social media and right, you know, all right. that stuff. And so, you know, and same with Demetrius Johnson. Right. That- well, that's the whole thing. It's like, so if you're going to, if you're going to be overlooked, how do you not get overlooked? Get in the mm-hmm. game and play, you know? So mm-hmm. it's tough though, because he is so great and he was such a great champion and his environment. Like there's so much about Stipe that is so great and likable. I guess that's yeah. kind of really what, where I was going with this was just like, dude, come back and fight, please. <laughs> you know, I like him. Like, I want to see him fight. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. I yeah. do too. Yeah. I want to see him with these new guys because yeah. there's a lot of new guys that um, that do like that wrestling hole that Stipe was able to um, expose on a lot of the people yeah. who were supposed to beat him. So it would be interesting to see those guys go up against him, like the mm-hmm. top ten to the top fifteen guys. But mm-hmm. yeah. Well, and also, you know, when Stipe was really getting big, kind of coming up and getting bigger too, that was the thing is like, he was like the, the younger, more fit, athletic heavyweight. And now, you know, you've got your Aspinalls and I know, you know, Doc, it didn't go his way Mm. against uh, the Black Beast the other day, but yeah, there are kind of guys in that blueprint on the way up. That will be interesting. Like, it's going to be interesting when we do get that Stipe versus Aspinall fight or, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like when they are either, well, unless Stipe just retires or whatever, but like, there are a lot of fights I would like to see. So Stipe, come back. Come back. Come back. back. We love you. You're so nice. You're so respectful. I know. (laughs) Champs. And I just, I'm sorry. I love the, um, stuff like whenever they show the lead up and then he's always with his wife he's like oh just one more thing and then just hangs up i know it's totally childish but it's funny to me and I know, <laughs> like it's so silly and he does it it's just silly to me but it's funny but um wait who does Steve, that so steve like he'll be like oh my god or, like if i'm with you and i'd be like oh my god and did you hear and then you're like what and then he just hangs up and then you know <laughs> I mean? it's like oh i need to say like just one more, you know, and then you know it's dumb. But it, like, if you look in the old, um, it's really cute. Yeah, and the and the um, I almost said unplugged. I, like my brain just went back to MTV. Oh, um, embedded, <laughs> embedded. Yeah, uh, then you'll see kind of that kind of stuff. And it, it it's I think it's funny. It's stupid. Aww, it's the same it's kind of John Vellante silly humor, but for some reason it just strikes my funny bone every time he does it. And then his poor wife is just like, it's so not funny, but like, <laughs> kind of is. You got to keep yourself Uh, entertained. (laughs) The longer you're married, the more you got to find stuff to just, you know, get a smile at least. (laughs) Well, speaking of speaking of champs, you know, welterweight champ uh, Kamara Usman had another great year, you know, on on the last show. The other day I was working with, uh, you know, working with Alan and um, Kiesa and. I think it was Alan had picked him for his fighter of the year or something like that. And it is true oh, nice. look back at the knockouts that Kamaru had and just the way he just really decisively, it's like that, that, you know, not to say anybody can't win, but, but he really keeps making an argument for looking like he's getting harder and harder to beat and can hold that title as, you know, for quite some time. Yeah, he's he's just short up everything. Like any hole you saw in his first couple of fights, he's it, it's null and void. Like he would beat the previous version of himself every time he steps out mm-hmm. there. That's how good he is. So, man, I, I feel like the only thing that could take him out at this point, it, I, I feel like it would be really surprising for someone to outskill him. I think mm-hmm. if someone were to just hit the button on the mark, maybe they could get some progress because it does look like he gets a little wobbled every now and then in his mm-hmm. fights. Um, even fights where he's dominating, there'll be one little moment where he's like, oh, yeah. and you're like, ah! And then he's like, just kidding. <laughs> and then he totally. gets on top and wins. So uh, that's the only thing I see right now is just someone kind of like a Amanda Nunes, just someone catching her. You know, mm-hmm. catching her with her with her hands a little lower, chin a little loose, and that being the thing that starts off um, a loss. But other than that, he's so short up everywhere technically that it's just really impressive to see what version of himself shows up each time he gets out there. Yeah, <laughs> he's just fucking so good, man. He's good. so good. He's so good. He's so yeah. good. And I remember working the ultimate fighter, you know, finale when he won and everything up against Hyder and all like, I, I just, uh, yeah, I remember that it's cool to see, you know, it's, it's cool to see him, how far he's come. And I, I was thinking about this with Ally Aquinta, you know, he retired this year. I know there was, a, you know, a lot of, uh, high profile retirements yeah. this year as well. And 
it was one of those things where I was like, wow, I remember going to the media day for the ultimate fire that he was on. I, you know, I remember Dang. yes. And I joke about that. Like that's when we met. I remember that. And so it's interesting to now have been here for the entire arc of somebody's career in the UFC. So I, I met to, to write Al a message and he was on the show with me and Hanato like before his last fight. And, but he was one of these guys and I wanted to, I wanted to send him a message to Al if you're watching, but, but it really, it, it means a lot. Like it was neat. And when I, and I, and part of me was like, Oh, that's, that's sad. He's gone. And I really like him a lot. But at the same time, yeah. I was like, Oh, that's cool. He got it. He did what he needed to do. He's getting out. He's got his other business. You know, mm -hmm. he's still young and help. Like it's just, I don't know. It's just like, Oh, it felt, I felt good about that one. Like I was okay with that one. There are some people yeah. they retire like, mm, really? Or like you should have done that five fights ago. But like with Al, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, that's right on time. Yeah. He, he just set himself up. He set himself yeah. up really, really well after the show with that, um, with that uh, real estate, mm -hmm. real estate thing, and he that was booming. And if anything, his outbursts in the UFC made him even more popular outside of it. Um, so yeah, Al, Al is a, is definitely a fan favorite and mm -hmm. definitely like one of those guys that you always root for when they go out there, no matter how much of an underdog they were, like in the Khabib fight. And um, yeah. dude, he's just, he's just, a, he just seems like such a cool dude. So it sucks to see him go, but I'm happy that he left on his own terms. He didn't let himself get punch drunk. He didn't like, you know, let himself get super injured or just keep going out there unprepared. Like he's just like, you know what? I'm not going to be trying that hard from now on if I do fight. So let me just exit out of here and do something I'm more totally. into. Yeah, totally. but well, I, love, you know, I love that guy. Like that was yeah. Was I just awesome. I just love awesome him. Career. I just love raging out. And for like you said, yeah. the out person. If people have never hey. seen the you boo and me, you boo and me. <laughs> like Alice, uh, I love that kid. It just look like kid. a like um. What was that scene? Are you talking to me? <laughs> yeah, it's from taxi driver. You talking to me? Yeah, like, 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 talking to me. Oh my god, yeah. why are you so New Yorker stereotype? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Awesome. Um, it's so, it's just so, it's just, but, but you mentioned the Khabib thing and that also brings up Felder who also retired. Same oh, thing. Felder, Felder still has you know, wars <laughs> in him in, in a mm -hmm. way, right? Like we know he can deliver mm -hmm. and you see, he's still an incredible athlete. He's out here doing triathlons and everything now, but Paul was another one where I was like, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm okay with it. As much as I love watching him fight, I was, I was like, you know, yeah, he's, he's, he's got a broadcasting career. If you haven't seen hacks, he's acting in hacks. You know, he has a oh, daughter. No and, oh yeah. No. So what he, is that on? So hacks is on HBO. It's really, really okay. good. Uh, it's really, really good. Okay. Right, actually I binged it binge like, the, it's only one season, <laughs> but yeah, I watched it all. and just like, it's, it's great. Um, but, right. but, um, but you know, Paul had, had taken, there was, you know, besides the lung thing, there were some other injuries where he's like, you know what? I'm not really sure it's it's worth me, you know, risking these other injuries or these things getting worse. You know, yeah. let me just get out now while I can do it. And again, yeah, that was another one where I was like, all right, I'm okay. And, I, you know, it's hard working with you guys when you're fighting, too. So every time yeah. one of you guys that works with me retires. Ah, okay. uh, no, don't say that. <laughs> it makes me uh, nervous watching you guys fight. Yeah, if I can get as close as Paul got before I retire, then I think I'll be happy. But um yeah. i don't know it's it's just like he has he had a kid he was set up with all this other stuff like he had all these other things all these other means of making money that didn't require his kid to see him all bruised up after a work day so um yeah it made sense man and and he's he he's a classically trained actor you know like he's his brain actually does stuff other than fight <laughs> so so sometimes you gotta get out of fighting before the fighting takes away your brain power for other things yeah. if, if you know what i mean so um happy for him for sure because yeah, if you talk to him a few times after or before, right before he decided to retire, you really felt that energy, like felt that like, what is it worth it kind of energy? Mm -hmm. Like, why am I yeah. doing this to myself? Um, you know, and, and he seemed really into the triathlon stuff, too. I think mm -hmm. it was he was just coming into a different 
um, a different chapter of his athletic career and yeah. more power to him for listening to that instead of letting the ego of wanting to get that title shot or wanting to continue to fight and continue to show everyone what he has. He's like, you know what? Th- it, this is the path for me. Um, yeah. So kudos to him. But mm-hmm. I, at the same time, when that was announced, I was like, oh, no, come on. I know, because hey. he is so come good. On, That's the thing. Hey. Like, I do love watching him. Yeah. Yes, yes, <sighs> yes. Uh, okay. And every well, time so like- I hear that uh, Tears of a Dragon song, I think about <laughs> Like, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, fuck, what is it called? How does it go? The tears of a dragon. My ass. Yeah, Bruce Dickinson, Tears of the Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. Wait, but Dickinson the lyrics are very. The lyrics. Iron Maiden, Bruce, isn't it Bruce Dickinson, the singer of Iron Maiden, or Judas Priest? Uh, that, is that is that what it no, is? No, Rob Halford is like Halford a remastered is one. Isn't, isn't isn't Iron Maiden? Isn't that Bruce Dickinson? No, Bruce Dickinson. I know that. Bruce Dickinson. Judas, Rob Halford is Judas Priest, right? Look at me. Let's see. To it was yeah, um, you know, I don't. I, I just hear. It I know. I on yes. Jazam it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I just wanted to, to give a shout out to Live. Uh, Live. Lean or dream, much love from London, England. Thank you so much. Uh, what up, Gazabi? Thy name's Saint. It is Iron Maiden. You're right. Yes, look at me. Yo, MTV Karen. Yo, and before that, I worked in a radio station, but we didn't even play metal. But I've, I actually, (laughs) I think I've seen Iron Maiden. What that's no, yeah, they I've definitely seen, I've I've definitely seen Judas Priest, but uh, because I think Priest, I think I saw like Judas Priest and ACDC. Together, if there is this, or yeah, I feel like I dope. saw them with ZZ Top all together, but I could Damn. be mushing all this. I've seen some really incredible concerts and some random concerts. I've seen people That's people awesome. would not believe that I've seen. Uh, yeah, but so like what? Um, was one? Well, Judas Priest was one. Oh. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, okay. like I've seen. Yeah, I've seen. I've seen Metallica. I've seen. Uh, let's see. But then you know, my first uh, concert seen... was a Kirk Franklin concert. Oh my gosh! Okay, nice, nice, nice. But I've seen George Michael. Uh, okay, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar yeah, yeah. artists. Oh yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, well, listen. Okay, so, um, oh. Oh, should we? Since uh, we're on a champ, oh. we're, on, we're on like on a champ thing, dude. Okay. That Volkanovski Ortega fight. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, good. And I mean, yeah. that was when I think of title fights and like the close things, like you know, like where you said where sometimes Camaro gets wobbled and he scares you and then comes back, but like, you know, I literally was like, holy crap, Brian's champ, like. I know, I know another champ now. I was like, yeah, that, that, the fact that Alex got out of that was absolutely insane. Insane. Volkanovsky's neck must be hella fucking strong. Like so strong. <laughs> like, I feel like his neck expanded and went, you know, and popped his yeah. head out of that grip because it was tight, man. And I know exactly, um, what Ortega was talking about because he said something about hearing the gurgling sound Mm -hmm. and I know exactly what he's talking about like sometimes you'll have someone like dead to rights is hitting everything um the carotid artery the the windpipe everything and in order to breathe they just have to relax their throat and go (laughs) to get the air through because if you like tighten up then the choke's gonna get tighter so you try to relax into it so like your muscles, your own tension isn't choking you. Right. And then you're just like, <sighs> just well, I trying to push air through you. Tight today, so I know what that feels like. But yeah, like yeah, that's gotta go. be weird. Yeah. Like, like put it on. like, no, wrong, wrong. I have, yeah. a, and, I have a little neck and a, Relax, and a, neck. And a, and a, and a, <laughs> and a big trachea because of my thyroid problem. But whatever. I'm not a, I was not formerly a man for people who love to say that. I like uh, but yes. Trachea. <laughs> oh, thank you. But yeah, no, because that fight and like Alex is there and he's kicking in like the whole thing. And you were just like, yeah, dude, how do you even fight? Like not even j- it's Brian. Like he's yeah. literally like the choke artist and stuff like yeah. that. So there's, there's, there's triangles, there's chokes and then there's Ortega, you know what I mean? And the, and mm-hmm. so I feel like 
it's one thing to get it out of somebody's, but like that'd be the equivalent of like getting out of either a Ortega, a, a, a Damian Maya, or a, a Oliveira, or you know what I mean, or a Ryan mm-hmm. Hall submission. Like those yeah. four, I'd be like, yeah, good luck. Or like you a know? Ronda Rousey. Like imagine if, if Rousey right. had the fucking arm extended and you got out of that somehow. Like that's never right. happened in the history of her career. Like as soon as she gets that arm, it's just like pop. You know, yeah. so it's yeah. Imagine, imagine someone getting out of that, surviving. Very so yeah, Volk is Volk is, a G, <laughs> Volk is a G. I don't know if he gets again. This is the like people who need more credit episode, but but Volk yeah. uh, should definitely get more credit. And I did have a nice talk with him before the Ultimate Fighter finale, and he's really cool. Like he, mm. he's a cool guy, and you know he cooks and all this stuff. Like I just uh-huh. I think that. You know, I love Aldo. I think Aldo and Max and all these guys are so beloved that when Volkanovski won, you know, we were all just like mad, like, right? Yeah. Like, it's Max. Like, like this little F- guy. <laughs> yeah. Little like, get out of here. Like, the, <laughs> yeah. more, the more you get to know him and then the more you see him fight, too, you're sort of like, oh, okay. I feel like there's probably a lot mm-hmm. of reluctant uh, Volkanovski fans out there. Like, well, I got to give it to him. He's kind of a G. Yeah. You know? There's no, um, He, I, I guess he's a little too new. He's too new on the scene compared yeah. to those other guys. They've been here since UFC took over right. MMA. So yeah. right. it's hard to give someone like that credit when they have close fights or fights that you could have scored for the other guy because you just so want your guy to win. Like the Max thing, I think, I think took a lot yeah. of uh, Volkanovski's steam off because everyone's like, well, Max is champ. Or like half, it's split straight right. down the middle. Like half of the people are like, oh, Max is champ. So yeah, he he's, he's a champ. Not going to give actual champ respect but uh he deserves it man especially after that fight especially after um you know he's another one who picks people apart so i think it's also hard to get behind those guys because yeah. they're just technically sound they're technically very good and mm-hmm. there's no big moment that you can think like you can think connor's left hand you know you can't really attribute yeah. any one powerful thing to volkanovsky because he does so much well and he just right. uses them all together um as, as a flow so i feel like if if you don't understand fighting as much it's hard to get behind those mm-hmm. guys but fighters love him because it's just so much to study so much. Uh, you can see all the skill out there on the, on the table. Like, oh, okay. He's sitting at the, up this way. And then that leads to this and this leads to that. And then, oh, now the leg kicks are really doing work. You know, like it's, it's, it's all very technical. So I love watching fighters like that. Max is the same way. He just has the, the, mm-hmm. the history. Yeah. And I, I'm curious if on the female side, you know, Rose had another great win. Valentina seems um, untouchable. But now that we saw the thing happen with Amanda and we saw that change hands with Juliana, mm-hmm. I do wonder if there's some 25ers out there salivating over Valentina going, I'm going to Juliana her. I mean, I don't, I don't, I find that hard. Like, look at, I, I would have never, I would not have suspected Juliana was going to, beat Amanda that way like you know mm-hmm. what I mean I really thought it was going to be if she was going to win it was going to be a submission um not 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 what happened you know what I mean because mm-hmm. I thought Amanda was going to be in there's a, a sub situation. there <laughs> yeah but you know what I mean like yeah, I thought it, it was, was in I there kind of <laughs> I know I know yeah but um but with Valentina like you're talking about being technically so sound and everything it's just like where's the hope yeah who who is it going to be I I actually think that um what is her name? Talita Santos. I think she's oh, going to make Santos. a... Yeah. Tyla. Tyla yeah. Santos. I think she's going to make a run out of Good. the 25ers on top right now. I think she's yeah. going to be the one. And I know everyone's talking about um, that Fiore chick. Manon Fiore. Yeah. yeah Fiore. 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 But Fiore. I haven't been as impressed with her as I am with uh, Tyla. So that's, yeah. that's my guess. If I were to uh, put money on who's going to be Fighting for the fighting for the title in actually close odds next year, mm-hmm. I would put it on her. As She's opposed to somebody's it. fighting and they have Pena odds, but Pena right. <laughs> wins. Well, it's just, I think she's on like a four or five fight win streak or something mm-hmm. herself, and mm-hmm. she is she is doing well. Oh, hey, okay, so uh, the Glover Tashira that was an awesome championship turnover yeah. moment this year. Like, that one is that was a big one for me. Yeah. Yeah, that one was huge. And and that one was, 
you know, like the battle of the good dudes, but I, I was so excited for Glover. And I know so many of us were because just the, the story of his coming to the UFC, the amount of time he's put in the age he is, the close calls, the chance before mm -hmm. he didn't come his way. Like, there's, I can't believe there were anybody, anybody other than Wachowicz's family that wasn't cheering for Glover, even if you love John Yeah, Like, it's just too good a story. It is. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Jan's mom pulled a Mama Woodley. Mama Woodley, him. right? Yeah, like, I wouldn't be surprised, just because it's such a great story. Um, yeah. Similar it feels to when Jan won, you know? Mm -hmm. um, if not... Uh, I wouldn't say more so, but uh, yeah, it's just, it's really, it's really good to see the people who put the time in, in the sport and in the promotion finally get, get the shot and make that goal, you know, pop, happen, like just make it happen. It's really refreshing to see that because you see a lot of newcomers get to jump the line because they're flashy because they're mm -hmm. the trending thing people are excited about their bright future and a lot of times once you hit 30 that excitement for your future goes down like so fast like it's every year it's just worse than like oh he's 31 oh my god take him out into the past year you know and um fighter like lover who's been there since we could remember watching ufc uh for him to finally get that gold is amazing it's yeah. so cool so it's, it's like one of those names that i knew about before i actually became a fan of mma just because i would always see it and i'm like oh that's a cool name you know like <laughs> oh yeah yeah exactly it's like one of those guys and then eventually you actually figure out who the celebrity is that you keep hearing about and you figure out how badass they are so it was really nice that was really awesome to see him win this year he's awesome and for folks if you guys are seeing this on my youtube channel then you can look Glover was on Tuesday Night Festivities with me and Hanato hey. after, after his after his title win. So <laughs> it was uh, it was fun, but yeah, he's he's a great story. He's just uh, such a good guy. I mean, look at he's got tough challenges ahead of him. Oh, let's be honest. Sure. But but uh, but you know, yeah. So people are saying that yeah, um, there's you know talking about that Juliana Pena. Yeah, live live learn or dream is saying. Pena was the biggest shocker for me personally. I think that one was really um, huge. Yeah. Gaza is saying the Glover Championship was the best moment of the year. Yeah, yeah. there was there was a lot of uh, yeah. There was there was okay. So so Lucifer is saying about um, not looking un unbeatable against Jermaine Durand to me. So that's another person who's been out for a little bit. But yeah. what would you talk about? You know, because I was over on Fight Island when Juliana was fighting her, and ironically enough, GDR got her like first submission win. That's against crazy. Juliana. And it was no, the craziest this is thing. Insane. It, was insane. it was insane. And, and I remember in the meetings, Juliana was like, "I made a mistake against Amanda the first time, and I'm not going to make the mistake again." And then, like, she made the exact same mistake mm. and got choked out. And I remember talking to Jermaine after we were like. Well, what had happened in there? You know, oh, she's like, man. I never did that. You know, and she was just elated at doing that. And uh, but yeah, so GDR could be a challenger for for Juliana for sure. I'd be so stoked for her to come and do that challenge, be the first challenger. I think that would be great. I, and I think Juliana's down for it too. Yeah. Um, I, I believe so. I, I gotta yeah. look. I gotta check That'd my notes. Cool. <laughs> I do. I like GDR a lot. She's a cool chick. She's a really yeah. cool chick. Yeah, she uh, is cool. She's a uh, cool. She's she reminds me of like the uh, disgruntled like police officer in those cop movies, like a like a. Well, because she is a cop. Yeah, no, I know. Right. The, yeah. Her energy is that character, like the grizzled, oh, the grizzled detective that, like you know, doesn't work with with others well. Right, and, right, right. You know, right. like is always off, smoking right. a cigarette, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Totally she has totally. that energy with her. She's like fucking cool, man. I like she her. She does. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's cool as hell. And hey, just so so um, people recognize here, a lot of people are saying that you uh, you were robbed and all that. And if they Yay. don't know, on the last week's show, Angie, was. we... <laughs> She was, she was, it was a fresh wound. So, you know, but we, we talk all about it and we kind of go through the whole thing. So you should definitely watch last week's episode uh, and, and get the whole, the whole take on that. But yeah, a lot of people, um, you know, uh, 
thought that was an awesome fight for you. And I guess that's kind of why the Glover story resonates with you, right? Because yeah, yeah, it's not over. (laughs) Exactly. You still have big plans. It's not over. It it really resonates for me. Um, I was always self conscious about my age. If anyone knows my backstory, I started. I took my first um, Muay Thai class at twenty four. In uh, oh, so old, so I was ancient. <laughs> I was ancient. I mean, and I didn't really think about it because I didn't think I was going to be a professional fighter. I was just doing it for fun. And right. then the more I fought, the more I was like, "Oh, this is cool. Like maybe I could make a career out of this." And then um, I think it wasn't until I got into MMA that I was a little self conscious because I was. 28 at the time, ripe old age of 28. And I just figured I had to run through everyone and become the champion in like three years or else I was going to disintegrate into dust. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so seeing these older champions and uh, these people who have more mileage, like body wise have way more mileage than me. And still they made it to the top. Like their chin lasted their, their ligaments and their knees lasted. Like they were able to like get that tank to the top and beat, beat these young bucks and get the gold. Uh, it, it's really, it's, it's, it's a big goal of mine to mm-hmm. fight the best and become the the best and I don't know it's, it's it's a very inspiring story like when you saw with Glover with Blakovich uh Blakovich uh with uh Moreno all of those stories uh, your boy Charles Oliveira yeah. like all those guys they went through the fucking roller coaster most totally, roller coaster yeah. of of careers and still ended up with the gold so those have been really inspirational for me because I feel like this time last year UFC was bragging about uh, all the all the champions combined records being the mm-hmm. best ever. Like everyone was undefeated yeah. or one or two losses. And I'm like, man, fuck them. <laughs> fuck them undefeated. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, fuck them. They haven't been challenged yet. But that's what yeah. people who are undefeated say to, <laughs> well, well, to, to the lessen the thing. blow. <laughs> yeah, but it's also because... I agree with that too, because on the flip side of that, you have your, um, who was it? Was it, was it, um, um, uh, Macy Barber and some of these kids that come, I see yeah. kids, but they come in, they're like, I'm going to be the youngest too, champion. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be the youngest champion and I'm going to be a champion by 22. And you're like, okay, it's possible. It's definitely possible. Yeah. But you know, and I know a lot of them had been already training for a long time, but, but becoming a champion, like they're, they're, there's a lot to it. It's not, it, you know, it, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's cool to want to be the youngest champion, but there's something about that age and experience and the ups and the downs and all the yeah. knowledge that you take in with the wins and the losses and the, how to, how to handle it. What, what if you're, cha- I mean, look at, we've seen it, right? Unfortunately, we've seen it with some, with some champions that got famous at a young age, grew up in front of our eyes as champions, get in trouble a decent amount of times and you're like, hey, maybe you would have actually been better off becoming champion a little older when you could handle yeah. all this. So I yeah. do fear sometimes for the for for some people who are so aggressively wanting to be the champion by the age of 23 or something like, well, OK, but I don't know. Maybe you won't actually be able to handle it as well as you think you can. Yeah. And I don't think they know they're thinking about that. I mean, their kids, they want to do something big like right away. And yeah. I was like that when I was 20, 21. I wanted to do something big right away. I didn't want to wait. Adults didn't know anything. I was an adult, you know? So yeah. <laughs> looking back on 21-year-olds now, it's so funny the how differently you perceive that age. But yeah. I remember thinking I, I knew everything at that age. And I can imagine if you're winning fights, you're beating people twice your age, you know, as a 15 year old. And then from that point on, everyone's telling you you're special and telling you you have a gift. And then you're still undefeated and you get to a big stage like the UFC. Like, of course, they're going to pump that into your head. Like, you're special. You're we're going to talk about this because that's cool. And you, you, you believe it no matter how much yeah. anyone in your circle is telling you to slow your roll and, um, you know, not, not let it go to your head. Like you, you believe it. And mm-hmm. it's hard to convince someone like that, that that's not the only thing you have to accomplish. Like you, yeah. you can, 
you don't have to limit yourself. You can be the oldest champion, <laughs> you know, you could be right. the champion who is the best technician. You can be, um, you know, the champion that fought the most fights. Like you, there's so many things that you can accomplish. It doesn't have to just be based on your age. And I think that was one of my biggest problems because I saw that a lot and it made me want to uh, rush ahead, you know, before yeah. I was ready. And I always tell people who are outside of the UFC who are able to get like fights and, and stay active. I'm like, do that as long as you can, because once you get to the UFC, you have to be at the level to face a champ, your first fight. Mm -hmm. Like that's what you, if, if you're not at that level yet, then you're going to have a lot of ups and downs like I did. And mm -hmm. just as an example, when I got back into the UFC, I faced Andrade as her warm up fight before she fought for the title. So that was my first fight into the back. Into Welcome back. <laughs> hey, anyway, nobody else wants to fight this bitch. So <laughs> Welcome back. have at it. You know, she needs, she wants one more before she fights the champ. So right, we'll give right. it to you. We'll give it to you. Have fun. Yay. Have fun with that. So, um, so yeah, you have to be ready. Like there's no easy fights in the UFC, especially, um, especially if you're hot shit, especially if you're, you have talent, like they're going to give you talent right away. Um, so you gotta be ready. Not everyone can get the Sean O'Malley route, you know, right. where you get the boost from Snoop Dogg and then you don't have to fight, uh, big names because everyone likes watching you knock people out. <laughs> well, and here's the thing. I'm not trying to hate on that energy. I didn't want to make it sound like I'm trying to come off a, a negative. I'm just saying, yeah, no, I, no. I, kind of like what you were saying by putting that limit on you, um, on, you know, like you're kind of set cause it's going to, it's pretty unlikely that it's going to happen. Right. And so you're kind of almost setting yourself up for, for a letdown in a way, uh, you know? Yeah. But, but to your yeah. point, Michael Chandler is one of those guys that when he came in because he was a champ over Bellator, because he's been mm. in incredible fights came over and, you know, some people were a little salty about the opportunities that he got right away, but he, yeah. he's really, really good. He's and really good. Showed, showed that he's really, really good. So everyone you know, likes watching him fight. Like if yeah. you fight like that, then people are going to show up because he just goes, you know, he goes forward. He's um, yeah. He puts his legs on the line. He puts his chin on the line just to hit the other guy in the chin. And you don't know who's going to win and whoever wins is going to be in spectacular as fashion. So Everyone's gonna show up to watch that kind of stuff. It's it's really impressive that, <laughs> that, that he was able to do that. I mean, I know you know people are, are are I'm curious if people if that was their fight of the year, the Gaethje Ooh, fight. fight of the so year. I know for a lot oh, of people that one that is, was a big one. That was kind of massive. That was, that was a really good one. Oh yeah. man, yeah, yeah, I can't. I can't. It was uh, it, it was insane, and, and um, <laughs> I yeah, can't it think was a better one. Absolutely insane. I do think you know. I do hope that uh, Gaethje gets the next title shot. I do hope that he gets that. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of the other ones, or I could even just we could use a cheat sheet for what. I mean, uh, all of mine are going to be the recent ones because those, those. I know. Yeah, I'm not trying there. to think what people thought. Um, well, I have here. I saw the list of but for for you know for fight of the year. Um, you know, uh, ba, ba, ba. that, well, I mean, that one was pretty, um, well, okay. Well, we'll just take some people's opinions. Oh, well, <laughs> uh, well also if people have a, a take on, um, uh, what the favorite, their favorite fight of the year was, but live lean or dream is asking, what do we think of Ty to Ivasa? Um, they say they think he's awesome and has improved a ton since moving to AK. I, I'm a I massive Tai fan. Yeah. So yeah. Like, I, I think he's great. I love his energy. I love his vibe. I like watching a fight. Like it's all upside for me with Ty. Yeah. Same. Same. He's dope. <laughs> yup. 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 Oh, and I love that we're getting viewers on Twitch here too. So this is cool. Yeah. We're on Twitch, what's up? Twitter and what? and uh, YouTube. But yeah, like I'm seeing a lot of people on Twitch. So if, nice. if people don't know, like, we just started doing this over on your Twitch channel, but we can definitely do it more. And maybe Angie, maybe you need to like do more stuff on Twitch because clearly you have an audience here. I know, right? And this would have been a great uh, week to do it because I haven't done shit. And if you, the bigger that my hair looks, the less likely I trained that week. Yeah. <laughs> It's good because it doesn't get sweaty and shrink. Yeah. But yeah, well, you're um, allowed a, a week off, fans, for Christmas. No, it's I feel really bad about it. I'm I'm going right back to the gym next week. I was gonna go back 
last week. And then I was like, I'll wait until Monday. And now that Monday's hit, I'm like, I'll wait until next Monday. So, yeah, <laughs> but I do okay. feel very guilty about that. So whatever, I'll be part of the new year's resolution crew at the gym. You know who you are. Hey, <laughs> new year's resolution yeah. going to be in the gym deep with their mask on. We just got masks back in California. Unfortunately, I don't think, uh, they, they hit, um, Jiu-jitsu places, though. You mean it? No, I mean it's San. You mean no? We've had masks here in San Diego. Oh well, in LA. San Diego. I know San, San Diego, Diego. You guys have been doing whatever. We've been chilling. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, here in LA, it's like they never went away. Ah oh, man, yeah, San Diego. We've been cruising pretty much, um, but there's not as many people out here. We're we no, sound it's like just a big city, but just we're not. You have, you have more. You just you you just have more people that that said no <laughs> and voted like um, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty over the mask. Yeah, yeah, but I I feel like the most crowded places like L.A. and New York, those are always going to be the first to fold with the mask mandate stuff because uh, because there's like people yeah, are literally it, living on top it. of each other I, and like I San know. Francisco too. You just need yeah. to come out to San Diego. We have space. I guess so. I guess so. Uh, so much I, space. You have so to drive much. everywhere. I know. So, you have your I'm own so incubator right there. Yeah. Like, uh, not incubator. Uh, you know what I mean? Separation. Hey, well, speaking Jeez. of San Diego, though, we were, you know, we were talking about um, people kind of uh, having good years and comebacks and all that. Your boy, Dominic, that's another one of these stories. Yeah. Of, you know, not losing faith in yourself of, of you know, not putting a limit on yourself and not getting, you know, uh, brutalized by setbacks and, and all of that. Like the fact that he came back and has been winning and, you know, looking good and he's not fighting easy people, you know? So Dom, I think gets a lot of credit too, as salty as he is. <laughs> that yeah. salty son of a, that salty son of a bitch. Uh, he's he had so him. much sodium. I'm sure after that, <laughs> after that video was taken, oh man, what a salty little guy! But you know what? He he can fight his fucking ass he off. Sure I was can. I was thoroughly entertained by that fight. It was, and I I talked about it before, but I was so happy that uh once because he he was, his fight was kind of like mine. He got rocked in the first round, yeah. but he he kept moving. He kept showing that he was alive, and I always think about his uh. Uh, Keith Peterson call out whenever he like yeah I'm like oh don't stop don't stop yeah Yeah. (laughs) don't stop the fight (laughs) don't stop the fight he's fine and he like had that leg and he was just rocking back and forth on Munoz and and I'm like okay he's alive he's showing he's alive he looks like a rocking chair like he's good and um and he was able to get back to his feet and really come back strong at the end of that first round and then just did his dominator thing the other two rounds so it it was a dope fight to watch and you know you haven't I haven't seen anyone frustrate Munoz like that in a long time I think Mm -hmm. he was looking like the scarier fighter in in that matchup and for him for Dom to come in and do that to him really put the division on notice like hey I'm still the dominator you know like I'm still I'm still the champ like I'm still the guy that everyone hates fighting because he can't fucking hit him so yeah, it, it was really cool to see. It was, and everyone was saying that it was a vintage Dominic Cruz performance, and I totally agree. That was that was the Dominic Cruz that everyone was just like, "Oh, this fucking guy! I gotta prepare to fight him." I know. <laughs> With like the shuffle, and then the like punch yeah. the wall here, and then the two step out, and then the and then the Matrix, and then the. I should um I should like, lend like out yeah, my services. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I should lend out my services as a Dominic Cruz impersonator. Like I bet, See, I bet there's gonna be sometimes someone. Dominic both, you know, you can do them both. Yeah, Just, yeah. Like, it's it's, it's kind of similar. Performances are really good. Well, my my Dominic Cruz uh impersonation definitely helped me nail my Stephen A. Smith. So. Totally. <laughs> the movements the, the foundation was there I had to, just had to make it less less practical <laughs> oh, I love it it's hilarious hey so what did you uh, oh Christopher Fernandez is saying, sending love from Hendo Studios that's who does all of your hey. your, pin up, your pin up photos huh? You, you my got pin up like, yeah my booty photos you doing a calendar yeah, thanks man um, you, I should, should man I should, should. I don't know I <laughs> 
I don't know. I can't. I'm still married. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> can't can't be having it. It has to be. It would have to be like a mostly fight picture calendar, and then like one right. booty photo, like right in, <laughs> but right in the middle. The one who filmed right you in walking July. out to your walk your way in the other day, like so, he oh, very yeah. clearly understands the assignment. Yeah, he did. He did. He was like, all right. <laughs> Fine. I think I think it's because I was complaining about my Instagram getting choked. I'm like, no one ever likes my post. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, here's like, an ass shot. Well, yeah. All right, I mean, here you go. Here's some likes. Are you happy? You fucking not make me do it again. <laughs> Poor husband. It looked good though. I mean, Thank you. you know. It looks, it's getting back to its full glory. Um, it always looks like you can see what it almost looked like before the weight cut. When you cut weight, like it's like, oh, it's nice, but you know, it looks a little deflated. <laughs> Could be a little more water in the upper region. <laughs> It'll be a little juicier. Yeah, well, yeah, just a little more plump, but it looks cute. It still looks yeah. cute. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that video was pretty great. Well, they have people oh, coming thanks. and saying your your fro looks great. Yeah, your your fro does Thank look you. great. And I, I was so that's happy when Kevin. you came out to to fight with it too. I was like, that's awesome. Yeah, I love yeah. I love that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. Is there people are saying do it? Trady eighty is saying you de- you need to do that calendar. So uh-huh. apparently we'll you're doing one. Maybe so, maybe uh, we'll do a what ha- happened was calendar. What ha- hey. Hey. Get your uh, jump rope shorts on. That was a cool uh, jump rope video. So I've never actually watched you jump rope. I just see your post jump rope photo. So I'm like, I bet she can't even jump rope. (laughs) Oh, she can. She can. Yo, Karen got the moves. She's got the moves. I was very impressed. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's really fun. And, you know, you haven't been going to the gym. I, 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 was debating and I kind of slept a little late today and I didn't jump today. And it's, it is that thing that like weighs on me and, uh, yeah. no intended, but I'm like, Oh, I didn't do it today. I, I did yesterday. I do need to start working in more, uh, weights and things. I think like, unfortunately mm. I, I got a, I don't know if I like plateaued or whatever, but you know, I need to, I need to, you know, probably change some things up and I'm not going to stop jumping rope, but I think I need to yeah. add in some weights and do some other stuff, but uh, I I'll do send really... you some, uh, I'll send you the Thai jump rope. You ever seen the Thai, the ones that the little Thai kids use? Oh, the leather Thai ones, school? Or... They're like, um, they're like a thick plastic and yeah. they would come in like red and blue and it's like a really thick plastic. So if you, if you hit your toes, you have to jump rope with it barefoot. If you hit your toe, you're breaking your toe. I felt like yeah. half of my toes, my toe break like is from that, but you, you can wear shoes. I'll let you wear shoes. I wear shoes. But- <laughs> you know, I'm jumping with weighted ropes. I'm not trying to like, cause I do a quarter pound, half pound, one pound, two yeah. pound ropes. So you would love the tie rope. Yeah. No, I love the tie rope. Because it's thick. It's like thick plastic. Like, yeah. Thick. And then your shoulders are popping after you jump. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Because I I need to, you know, I use the the weighted ropes. Dilts. Dilts. Yeah. The shoulders are like super round. Like, uh, did you see uh, Dean Thomas's Dana White? Last Dana White video, like that's what my shoulders look like after I jump with this rope. <laughs> so I'm gonna send you one. It'll make it. Oh, you can't. Geez. You can't do crossovers with it though because you'll break your toe. <laughs> yeah, I can do. I know. I've, I think I. I did a crossover. I can do a couple with like the one pound rope. Okay. And then, and, but that's hard. But yeah, like the two pound rope, I can swing it around like. 10 times or so on single jumps. And then I got to go to like two jumps because it's just heavy. And yeah. literally like if you, when you, but you, you know, you have to get a lot of force going. So if you uh-huh. miss, like it literally almost wipes me out because it, yeah. it you're swinging it so bad. And then it, it sweeps your feet out from you. And then you mm-hmm. start to fall forward, you know? So, yeah. uh, so the two pound rope is something that I'm still getting better with uh, okay. because yeah, it's, it is challenging. Um, it the is worst challenging. Is that was, that clips was... your foot and then smacks you in the face oh. <laughs> that's the worst man hey a uh, lion crusher said she yeah. ordered her tie rope from amazon all right i nice. might i might hit them go. up see if they got it over there evil amazon nice. oh, this is, <laughs> Quint, did you see quincy cordova just said i said quarter pound half pound sound like an old jeezy record <laughs> ah. so funny 
(laughs) (laughs) That is funny. That is funny. Uh, You know, um, I don't know if we are, if there was like other people of, uh, of 2020, I'm trying to look back on some of the other ones that were Oh, what about some uh, newcomers? Well, right. That's what I was going to say. Like who came on the scene where you were like, oh, well, I think that men on Fioro was one oh, that a lot that, of people uh, were like. That King Casey chick. I like her a lot. Um, she's a 25er. Uh, what is her Wait, which one? name? Is, is King Casey. Um, I think she's out at Syndicate or something. Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah. I, I, um, uh, oh, no, my phone died. I use Uh-oh. this one. I think I know who you're talking about. Well, one th- you know, um, you know what's uh, an exciting. Re- uh, well, okay, wait. Casey O'Neill. Oh, that Casey, girl. yes, Casey O'Neill, yes. Yeah, so, I like that girl. Blanchfield now, right? Erin Blanchfield is doing well. Yeah. Well, you know, I wasn't um, impressed with her until her last fight. I was like, oh yeah. shit, like this girl is something. But I think, yeah. um, I think she had one fight before that, and maybe she just was getting her feet she wet or awesome. something. But this fight, she just phew, blew it out the water. So that was really cool. That was really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Court, uh, Casey O'Neill. Um, I already said Talia Santos. Um, yeah. Who else? I'm trying to think if there's any new straw. I feel like there was some. There was some... Amanda Lemos is a really impressive fucking bitch. <laughs> no, I feel like there were probably she, more. Yeah. She's she's definitely gonna be someone to watch next year after yes. stepping over this s- stone. <laughs> she should be a thanks to Doug Crosby. Twenty five or she was she was bigger. That's bigger. everyone though. That's this is everyone is that big except for me, um, Carla, uh, fucking um, Tisha, and a yeah. couple other girls. Everyone else is that fucking big. Yeah, yeah. You know, like she, the, the twenty five ers come from you. like forty five. The twenty five ers Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's all of them bitches though. Like fucking um, uh, half of half of them have moved up already. But like Nina Ansaroff, she's huge when she fights. Huge. Um, who else have I? But uh, Ashley Yoder was big. Now she looks yeah. a lot smaller when she fights. Yeah. Um, who else? There's a, there's a few other ones that I fought that were just like big and dry. Uh, she moves she moves up and down, but she's a big little meatball. Yeah, she used to she fight at 35 and she won fights there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same with Lemos. So, um, so yeah, these are big girls coming down. Fight little on me and I don't give a fuck. I'm still knocking them out. Fucking assholes. <laughs> Can't wait for next year. Fuck these bitches nice. up. Bring yeah, back bitch yeah. fucking season. It was, I feel like I've, I, uh, I, what do you call it? I cursed myself. Well, as soon as bitch fucking season started, bitch getting fucked over season started. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That was the beginning of bitch getting fucked over season when I brought out those t shirts. So I'm like, fuck. Oh. I think I, I think I did it to myself. I think I did it to myself. Yeah. I was trying that like that was me encouraging myself to go 150%. Yeah. Right. And still didn't work. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Problem is, wah, I know that's the thing. So, so it's funny. So, the, the, the motto I'm going to take into next year, and I, and I took a picture of it with it the, the other day, and I was like, oh, maybe I should, I should post this on the gram. So, if you see it on the gram, um, because <laughs> the, the motto was like to to get something you've never had, you have to do something you've never done. Right. It was something Ooh, like that. I, I, like literally that. Have it. I wrote it. I heard it and I was like, oh, sh- Nikes. I love that. Who so wrote I wrote that? it down. That's dope. I know. And I stuck it. It's literally on a post it note on my fridge now. And I was like, God dang it. That's right. And yeah. so I was like, you know what? I think that's going to be my 2022 uh, sort of not motto or whatever. Cause I do, you know, my, my sort of, I do believe what's meant for me will come to me. And that is a hundred percent of how I operate. But at the same time with that, I was like, you know what? That makes a lot of sense to me. Like I literally was one of those things that like, I almost, you know, you didn't pull the car over to stop the car and write it down. But I remember I heard it. (laughs) I like literally, 
I must have been home already, but wrote it down. Cause I was like, that is yeah. a really good thing. And so, um, but it makes sense. And I welcome uh, change. This has been like gone through a lot of changes this year and I welcome yeah. that. And I, I, I really do embrace new adventures. I'm the type of person that does love new things and wants to try new things all the time, but I also don't take a lot of risks. And mm -hmm. so I was like, Oh yeah. And it's yeah. funny how those two aren't like, the same, you know, like taking risk and doing new things aren't the same. They're not. Because, yeah, like doing new things doesn't always, there isn't always a danger side of it, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm going to do this new thing and it's going to be fun or I'm going to hate it, but it's not going to affect my life. But if you take right. a risk, that's like, ooh, like this could go really bad. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> this right. could this could ruin really everything. Bad. Well, you and I both work in the public field, right? So for example, yeah. like over this course of this last year, I threw a lot of things at the wall to see what would stick in terms of different videos and different things. Yeah. And some stuff I tried and I was like, I really thought it would do well. And I was like, well, it did not And then I was like, well, maybe it didn't do well because of X, Y, and Z. And, or, or I was like, or maybe nobody cares, <laughs> you know? And yeah, like, yeah. so I had to, I had to, you know, there's some things that I was doing and I was like, okay, well, yeah. And you look, like you said, like my, my views are getting throttled and I'll look at stuff and I'm like, wow, I just put in uh, all that work and uh, 200 people liked it yeah. or saw it or saw it even, you know it's what I mean? Okay. And I was like, so mom watched 10 times. I know I checked <laughs> the video a couple. My mom watched you know, 12 times. Money up here. And so sure. I was like, wow, that's spectacularly Which, uh... embarrassing. Which reminds me, my mom asked us a question in our last show, and we did not answer it. So uh -oh. keep your eyes peeled for Angela's okay. mom. <laughs> I will. I will. She used the username Angela's mom as well. So. Okay. Yes, I'll keep an eye out. But yeah, but so keep like, an I, and I, I feel that. I mean, you know, obviously, you're you're putting everything out there on the line physically, and your body, and you're out there, and everybody's watching you fight, and da da da. But you know, yeah, I put these things out in there, and I was like, wow, I've been doing this a really long time, and I, wow, that's yeah freaking pathetic and then i get all sad and then i'm like nobody even cares and da 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 and i still get people every day they're like do you work for the ufc anymore and i'm like yeah so i guess you don't watch a lot of pre-shows and post shows uh. i'm like you know and so that sucks i get that all the time people still ask me if i work there i'm like yeah i'm going on my 10th year uh yeah, yeah i still get i i get people asking if i fight still and i fight like every fucking day so <laughs> You're like, that's we a, that's, go that's right a now. them problem. Yeah, that's a them problem, yeah. not a you problem. But oh, they're asking about um, Carla versus Rose uh, um, for I, next year. I want to see that again. Do you think? When do you think that's going to happen? Did they like say a date at all in any of the press conferences, or were they just uh, tossing it I out there? Well, like Rose it's next, usually, but we don't know. Yeah, I think Rose usually needs a little bit of time, right? Um, between fights, it takes but, a time. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I would guess maybe spring. Right? Yeah, probably. And that's what I was maybe, thinking. Maybe like have, April uh, or yeah, April or or May ish type of thing. Get a good eight week camp going, three month camp, whatever. <laughs> I think I think it'd be whatever. good. Carla, you know, obviously there's history there. Carla's mm -hmm. been winning fights. You know, so I, I'm, I'm interested to see it. And obviously Rose has uh, evolved quite a bit now. Uh, she will yeah. probably not get uh, out grappled at this point. It'll be a lot, a lot more. It'll be a really interesting fight because yeah. Carla's striking has come up a lot. And, you know, Rose's grappling has come up a lot. So it's like. But Rose was like a grappler when that fight took place. Like right. her, all her, all her wins on the show were submissions. We're subs, and, right. and, um, I think, I think Carla just out pressured her when they fought. She just kept coming. It was that wrestler pressure and you can grapple your ass off, but Rose's positioning was usually off of her back. That's where she was strongest. So, so you have to wonder, um, if that's still going to be the case, if Carla's still going to have that grappling advantage because she has great top pressure and because she's mm -hmm. desperate for the takedown more so than Rose kind of just goes with the flow with her takedowns. Like she'll, mm -hmm. she'll do that like Kimura thing that got her in trouble against Andrade, but has worked against right. everyone else. And would, I wouldn't be surprised if it works on Carla too, because she doesn't really lift people up. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, I think it's a really, it's going to be a really closely contested fight. Like they both, 
they both look really good um, on the ground. But I think if Carly gets past her range, then Rose is going to have a lot of trouble because like right. even, even in the Zhao Nan Yan fight with Carla, um, Zhao Nan Yan was able to land clean a couple times before Carla got in, like just like with her, with her high kicks or whatever. So I feel like Rose has better movement on the feet and she her kicks are stupid accurate so that's going to be the hardest part for carla is getting past that but i think it's going to be a good fight it's going to be closely uh that was a lot sorry i don't even know if <laughs> no that's great no you i guys saying, want to I hear I mean, all that but <laughs> no you said the exact thing that i was thinking it's all going to yeah. be about the range if she can get inside because mm -hmm. my my point was just going to be that rose has gotten so so uh efficient and so tactical with fighting at range using those long jobs, you know, all that. Uh -huh. So she keeps people, I think she's going to be able to keep Carla at her range if she wants her to. And Carla's going to yeah. have to run those risks of, of coming in to take her down. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it though. Yeah, me too. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Be a good one. Good one. Yeah. yeah. Yes. yes, yes. Well, you know, Leo I don't... J said Carla doesn't have meatball strength like Jessica, but she has a uh, she has technique and she has better chain wrestling than Jessica does. Like Jessica goes big for the left, but she doesn't chain stuff together as well as Carla does. She she has done better recently, but like in the Shevchenko fight, she she was out out uh, techniqued. You know, like yes. Shevchenko would like go. Boom, boom, grab the leg, go to the clinch, hit the little knee thing, get on the back. Like, it was just really, really aggressive and fluid. And you yeah. can see that, yeah, Andrade only has the one big entry the and lift. <laughs> yes. So big. So, you know, I, I go did I, yeah. <laughs> did I see Mystic Mystic Black in here? Yeah, so Mystic Black, one Ooh. of our one of our homies. So, um, but, uh, yeah, asking any, any cap to how long uh, you'll fight, like, Will you keep fighting forever? Like, have you, have you, like how we were saying Me? with the young oh. kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, are you yeah. going to, because I mean, when we're talking the strawberries, I mean, look at Carla has been in it for a while too. Like, that's the thing. It, again, I know she was the inaugural champion, but if it came back around, like, it's cool that she's getting another shot, you know? So don't, yeah. don't, don't stop. Yeah, I um like for me, I'm I'm fighting until you know it doesn't make sense anymore, and yeah. I think I think it just it, it takes a uh, a little self um what do you call it? Just like being real with yourself to to yeah. know if you're doing it for the money or if you're doing it for the um for like the passion. And for me, it's still the passion. Like that thing came out where it was like, Oh, did, did uh, judges cost Angela $73,000? Funny enough. I don't give a fuck about the money. Like, obviously I do, but that's not the thing that pisses me off the most. What pisses me off the most is the hard work that I put in and the fact that I'm getting the same outcome as if I just didn't even fucking try. And that's the biggest, like, yeah. uh, that's the biggest, um, hit to me is my ego and my self-worth. It has nothing to do with what's in my bank account. So um, I think once I start w being more concerned about the money than like my actual performance, that's a good red flag. Like, hey, it might be time to hang it up because fighting like it's you, we're we're never going to get paid <laughs> you know, enough yeah. to be a fighter. Like it's a really hard job. It's really stressful. All the, all the pressures on you, you have to work like twice as hard as other athletes to be mm -hmm. good and in shape and to know all the techniques, to know all the defenses to all the techniques. So like what we do, it's always going to be a passion thing. It's never going to be for the money because we just have to do too much. So mm -hmm. if you're going in there um, what do you call it when you're not passionate? Is it impassionate? Is that the right word? Your word dispassionate. Name? I think it would dispassionate, be dispassionate, right? Or you're dispassionate. phoning it in. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're phoning it in. Yeah. If you're, if you're going in there, phoning it in and you're fighting a very passionate up and comer who's making 
15 and 15, you're going to fucking smoke. You're probably going to yeah. get really hurt, you oh. know, like, <laughs> yeah. So it's never going to be about the money um, for me as long as I'm, my head is in the game, as long as I'm happy with what I'm doing. As soon as I start feeling the money make, make, uh, make, uh, make sway my opinion more than the actual work that I have to do, then I know it's time to hang it up. So I feel like I'm not there at all right now. I'm going to... Hopefully I'll fight until I'm the ripe old age of Glover. <laughs> well, that's smart though, because I do know, uh, you know, I, and I'm not, I don't want to, um, I don't want to say who it was, but for a person who retired not too long ago, that's exactly what it was, was that he was going and fighting for the money. And it's like, you're, you know, you're putting your life at risk, literally and physically. And, you know, other people in your, in your family who, who love you are along for the ride here. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, like you just said, I'm sorry, I'm like one hair that's like, um, <laughs> it's da dangerous, <laughs> especially if you are somebody I don't know, uh, a little bit older. And, um, and yeah, like you said, you got these young, hungry, hungry kids in there. So this person had realized that, yeah, they'd gotten to the point where they were fighting for the money and yeah. uh that's not a good situation and no yeah. it sucks it sucks because then you feel obligated to show up to something that is that goes against every bone in your body like nothing in in your like primitive human mind says show up at this time at this place to fight someone <laughs> you know like nothing know. In your human brain says to do that like you fight when there's nothing when there's no other choice that's when you fight so the fact that we're tricking ourselves into wanting this thing like we want to fight we want to go in a cage we want to beat someone up you know like you're tricking yourself into doing all these things against someone who you don't know who you don't have no animosity towards you know you, even if there's beef it's not real you don't know this person so yeah, yeah you, you just to make yourself do that it's it's hard yes. well, money so, isn't enough no it's not so then <laughs> money isn't you enough know to trick yourself. as we look to as we look to next year and actually what what's interesting about this um you know this is episode 46 so if people have are just kind of seeing us here either on twitch or on youtube or twitter um this is our 46th yep. episode. So we, hey. this is something new that we started in 2021. You know, I had mentioned that uh, we started some new things. And like I said, I'm excited about new things and trying new new stuff. So this literally yeah. was, you know, I, it was a risk in that of like, well, do I, does anybody care? Right. Like, do, do we want to do we want to do this? But it isn't really that risky because whatever. But like we've learned a lot. <laughs> if, you, if people go back and look at our first episode, like the the um, the audio was all jacked up, right? Because I didn't know what I was doing. Like the audio yeah. levels were jacked up. Like we've we already figured it out. The so many mutations of this <laughs> yeah. of like where we would record it and then it was on this program. And then we had to tone hey, it down, and then you would you edit see, it. Uh, here. Tiago <laughs> Bernardes. <laughs> oh, nice, I watched nice. every single one. Let's go. Nice, nice. Thank you. Well, Thank so you. Okay. So you you've seen. <laughs> you know you've seen the uh the evolution of the ups and yeah. downs and i think now we got it humming along pretty nicely it's a nice so, little machine yeah so i was thinking about that earlier today i was like oh wait we're gonna get to have like a um an anniversary episode when we get to episode 52 basically right well and because i was oh, like when okay. i upload these on um because these folks uh, these are also on spotify apple uh apple Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. And when you load them into the thing, you know, it says like season, you know, episode number or whatever. And I was like, oh, these are still season one. And I was like, oh, well, I guess we'll do each year will be a season maybe. Right. So because yeah. I was like, or should I change it at, at, at 2022? Should like season two start next week? I don't know. What do you think? Oh, um, you're asking me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's ask the chat. What do you want to say? So we went season to season two start in 2022. But anyway, you know what? I started I started daydreaming because I was thinking yeah. about. I was thinking about we could do some kind of like jump rope contest for subscriptions. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, like a jumpathon. I'm gonna yeah. keep jumping on the jump rope. I, I would totally do a jumpathon. Uh, um, no, or I'll brain, do the thing like, where I'm like, once on we get ten thousand subscribers, I will put the camera behind me when I jump. Yes. But, uh, yes. No. I love it. I love no. it. I love it. Yes. No. Let's do that. Okay. No. You, you guys heard no. it. It's official. Ten thousand no. subscribers. So what had happened was, and Karen is gonna show her ass. <laughs> 
<laughs> as she not. jumps rope. Oh, I want them double unders, baby. Let's no, go. That, no, that's what I'm cross it up, no, cross no, no, it up. No, 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 no. Hey. No, no, no. Maybe we could Not get a double wait. Dutch camera and then you only have to turn around every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've never tried double Dutch. I need to try it. Really? I've never tried it. I've never what? tried it. Oh no. my God. I uh -uh. sucked at double Dutch. I was so bad. I was so bad. It didn't help that my name was Angela. So all the kids, all the, well, it was a white name, white name. So oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a well. I grew up in a black neighborhood, so oh. when I, and I grew up in like a Dutch. totally white town, that's why I grew okay. Up Dutch. All right, I was like, I was the most chocolate woman in town. So Literally. you were teaching so. them how to double Dutch, even though you didn't know how to. I didn't know how to double Dutch. Like, it's like this. No, <laughs> I must have tried it as a kid. We've seen it, but like nobody really did it. It's not like you know, down when we popped the fire plug for the hot day in the summertime down on the corner of whatever in Harlem, like, no, oh, I, yeah, I didn't yeah. grow up. Boy, God, I grew up in like a really crappy <laughs> town that had an apple blossom parade. You know what I mean? Ooh, like, I grew up in like, yeah. Nice. Was, yeah, was yeah. But so, yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway. So yeah, is it like, it, it just, I was just saying that the fact that I couldn't double Dutch just made me more of an outsider. <laughs> Okay. And it sucked. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go watch Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, and I was I was an outsider because I was the only person in town who looked like they should have been double dutching. So yeah, yeah, there you go, there you go. Everyone. So that's why KB story. had zero <laughs> dates growing up. Aww. Zero. See, um, I didn't have any dates because of my older brothers. They always scared everyone away. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. No, my yeah. older brother wanted to hit on my friends, but uh, but yeah, oh like, yeah, I couldn't go out go out with his. But like. Nobody in town was trying to date the chocolate girl, so I had no Aww. dates. I never had a date in my life, like never. I, we've talked Forward about this before, but now. like nobody ever walked, like came to my door and well, good evening, Mr. Bryant, and I'll hover home by ten. Like that just never happened <laughs> ever, not ever in my lifetime. So that um, happened to me once. <laughs> did it? Yeah. And and, and we're, so we're, dorky. were they scared? <laughs> yeah, they were scared. And then my dad like played the part. He was like. Who are you picking up my daughter? He was like there for some reason. <laughs> That's so cute. I love it. I love it. And well, and like, I love yeah. the fact that all the fighters always have daughters. Like if people know, it's very rare that, um, especially the male fighters, but that they have sons. So, you mm -hmm. know, Alan Joban has a son, but most of them have daughters and like multiple daughters. And it's just hilarious. I guess that all the testosterone, I, it's like obviously a function yeah. of all this stuff. But it's incredible how many fighters have daughters. So I always think of that with the dating, that these guys are going to be showing up to date and they'll be like, yeah. oh, great. Sean Strickland's here. You know oh, what I mean? Or whatever. Man. Like, I don't think he has kids oh, yet. But like, yeah, Doom so. has, you know, only daughters <laughs> and Shogun only has daughters and like all these people, you know what I mean? Oh, you're man. like, great. Awesome. Poor guys. Yeah. And they know, they know if they're not like that, their friends are, you know, so it's, right. it's, uh, it, it's, it's, Felder's got least, a daughter. Felder's gonna give that guy so much grief. I'm I'm saying at least uh you know everything they know know wrong about men, they probably heard the worst, so they can be as shady as possible and they have a reason because they know how fucked up guys can be. So there you go. Don't treat my baby girl like that. Like I feel like I feel like that's a good upbringing. You you have an overprotective daughter or dad yes. that's like don't treat my baby girl like that. That's and at right. least when she gets older and she feels someone treating her the way her dad wouldn't approve of, she can go call him to like kneecap him real quick. You know? Yeah. <laughs> go leg like, kick him real quick. Some some <laughs> stuff would have some stuff would have been different if my dad were still alive. That is very very true. Yeah, there you go. Um, there you go. It's protect your, hey, so protect your daughter's dads out there. Protect that's them. right. You got to do it. Uh, Kevin Wolfark is saying 2022 we should start season two. So he's saying that okay. yeah, season two. I kind of I kind of think that as well because honestly because if we just waited till we got to episode 52 like we took a week or two off here and there like it won't you know what I mean line up exactly. Yeah. I think we should definitely. Episode 52 should be an anniversary show, but I, uh, but yeah, I think maybe we'll let's start season two next, next week. Right. Yeah. It was, it was, yeah. Let's do season two, 2022. 
And yeah. then um, on the 50th, uh, 52nd episode, we could be like 52 weeks of yes. Karen and cool. Angela. But yeah, yeah, let's start season two. We've been we've been boosted more episodes this year. We've been. Yes. Uh, <laughs> there you <Yes>. go. <laughs> and so and yeah, and actually, too, and so people should know, usually um, we we've been doing these on Sunday evenings at around five, because I know, you know, on Mondays, the MMA landscape is a lot more congested usually. And a lot of time we just do this on Sundays, like I'm either, you know, got my flight home in the morning from the fights or whatever. But um, I think Sunday's evening is a good time to do it. But uh, yeah, because also usually a lot of time you're you're training at this time. Yeah, I'm usually training right now. Damn, it's only 3.30. <laughs> I'm usually yeah. getting ready for the next session. Um, okay. So, yeah, Sundays at uh, 5 o'clock. Yeah. Still yeah. Pacific Standard Time. We could play around yeah. with that yeah. um, a little bit, especially on this. Uh, these we, we still have, like, two more weeks until fights, I think. Two or three more yes. weeks until fights. I will be working, yeah, that uh, Giga Chikadze calvin Cater fight. Okay. It's gonna oh. be so good. Like, oh, hi, yeah. welcome to 2022. Boom. Like that one, like I just I like I, I I just you know, like um you know the old Batman and all that like pow, like kablam. Like I feel like yeah. that's how they should just advertise that is with like all of those like yeah, yeah like kablam wow. things because like Bam. they're both they're both yeah. so good. And, <laughs> He's throwing and the cool thing about yeah, like I know, you know like <laughs> the, they, they just excite me because it's two guys that are already great. But you also know, like, we're going to get to see these guys fight, like, for a lot. A lot. Like, I love that they're, like, right in the yeah, thick of it now. Yeah, it's not like they're fighting like, for the job. They're, they're just they're, they're just, just in their primes. This is going to be a prime fight. Prime fight. Two guys in the prime having a prime fight. It's going to be good. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, prime yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the first one. But, yeah, you're right. So Sundays, um, we usually do this. In, and there are a lot of people here, Angie, on Twitch saying you should definitely be doing more things on Twitch. So, Okay. Um, yes, I'll I'll get hey, on that. I gotta set listen, my stuff up again. <laughs> if Twitch would let me do jigsaw puzzles, if I could set up a Twitch channel to do they jigsaw do. puzzles, they do. What are you well, talking about? Well, did you about? see? I cranked one out. I cranked a thousand piecer out in uh, in less than wow. twenty four hours, and that's counting my sleep time because uh, <laughs> what was a really what is in my stories? Is it was a very easy pattern, so I wasn't even mm. like. Eh, but it was a thousand pieces. So I was like, yeah, let me just knock this out. Yeah, good job. <laughs> but I was thinking I could do it. I mean, I could do it on my YouTube, but like puzzle. Yeah, there's a lot of different, we... like they have people doing Rubik's Cubes. They have oh, people really? doing, yeah, jigsaw puzzles. Um, board games is really popular, especially um, like Dungeons and Dragons type thing. But you could play anything. Like I, I was thinking about doing it and I'm just playing Tetris. <laughs> How about can I get my bop it can out? My, yeah, you could do any game. I mean, you can just do you can do this, like what we're doing right now. Like this is a thing that people do. So okay. yeah, you can get creative with it. That's the nice thing about it is that you can be creative. Um okay. hopefully maybe you do uh start doing that and then they'll have you commentate on the next ESPN, uh not ESPN, the EA UFC game. <laughs> Oh, I would love that. I would love yeah. that. Yeah. It's so funny. Um, the funniest thing is playing with DC and he's commentating on his own fight. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, he's looking tired out there, Joe. It's like, what? <laughs> you would say that about yourself. <laughs> you probably would. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I feel like the oh. yeah, the um, programmers put that in there on purpose. But <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, it's pretty that's funny. so funny. Well, yeah, I should explore Twitch because I was looking, you know, uh, I never did find a PS5 this year, so um, the kid did not get one. Uh, I never. Oh, so oh, Simon no. Long is playing. Say I could play chess. I don't play chess, but I do play uh, oh. Othello. I like the game Othello, and and so oh, I actually I thought saw about that. This. Yeah. Well, I thought there's this, there's a game like this this brain twister game, like a mind bender game that I was thinking. I was like, oh, I could play that there. Like, but you you have to. Act, it's like these little mysteries and people have to figure them out and to get the answer, like this creative little thing. And I was like, Oh, like that would be fun. Cause you just to be talking with people and stuff like yeah. that. Um, or Cause problem. that's really what it is. Yeah. What is that one um, where you shake it, the thing and then it gives you letters and you have to spell it? Oh, yeah, Boggle. Yeah. yeah, Boggle. Boggle. I said Boggle. I feel like that would be a good game for you too. Cause you're so wordy. 
I would crush that. Oh, you don't even yeah. want to know what level I'm on, on my wordscapes thing. I'm not like, I literally look at this. I was like, wow, that's actually pathetic. That means you've played that game that much. And it's all word. It's all Wait, word. You should do that. You could do that. I know. On well, maybe thing. you're that's right. Impressive. Maybe I will. Because if my mom's still watching, like she literally will send me a screen grab of hers if she gets stuck. And I'm like, Ugh. And like, so I'm, I'm like, she's like, how do you bunches. always know the word? And I'm like, well, you know, everybody knows the word, you know, or whatever. But so actually that <laughs> I would go on Twitch and play word games like that. Actually, I would totally do that. Yeah, I thought it was funny. Um, Leo J said a thousand pieces in a day. That's basically Rain Man territory. Yeah. Anything where you feel like you're in that like slightly worrisome <laughs> area of being good at a game like you probably shouldn't be that good at this game that's twitch worthy for sure <laughs> okay well then that is how i am with jigsaw puzzles because i yeah. literally i'm like a, 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 a damn good at them damn good yeah, at them. Go. And, and i'm addicted to them like i can't i, I literally I, I had it out and i and i already you know took it all apart and everything but i was like <laughs> I should go to bed. You know what I mean? Or whatever. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like one in the morning here. I'm right, I want to see if I can, I have a picture of it here. And so I was like, Oh yeah, no, you know, uh, yeah, I should, I should, I should probably stop for a while. And I was like, just a couple more pieces. And then I'm like, I just, all right, just let me just finish this shoe. And then, okay, yeah. well, let me just do that. Okay. So this is the one I did the other day. Whoops. Wait. Um, yeah, I hear, I'll hold it up to the camera. It was, uh, here's my video of it. Oh wait, well, hi Karen. It's too it, it was. What is that? Is that too close? Oh, okay, I see it. Okay. Oh yeah. oh yeah. So I was doing a video of this, and so this was when I had first started it. You know, it mm. was like these flip flops, and I had uh -huh. started it on. Um, I started it on Christmas Eve, and I finished it on Christmas. Nice. <laughs> well, well, whatever. Uh, you know, because uh, yeah, I wish. Oh, I did. Did I take it? No, that was only. I only. Oh, no, I didn't take a picture of the finished product. I did a story on it. Anyway, I could, I, I do think, yeah. You're really, slightly... you're really excited about this puzzle. I think you should do that on, um, on Twitch. That would be your thing. Cause you're I so freaking right. excited about it. It's a fucking puzzle, Karen. No, dude, I was like, and I, and I, when I pulled out my box of puzzles, cause I was like, Ooh, which one should I do? And then I was like, okay, well, let me do, I don't want to oh no, save that one in this. Wow. So then I pull one out and I don't even remember where I got it. I think I did a swap with a friend of mine cause I, I didn't buy it, but I did it. And I was like, no, like I get, I get, I get, yeah. Like if you're I one of those like, people that it's annoying for regular people to play it with you, then you should do it on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't really let other people. Like it's like if like, um, like we played my coach, uh, Justin Flores. He's really good at Street Fighter, like the old uh -huh. Super Nintendo one. Yeah, with the lead Street pipe Fighter and Alpha. stuff. Yeah, uh, the lead pipe. Oh, no, that's that Streets of Rage. Oh, streets okay. I remember you used to pick up stuff to fight with. Yes, yeah, that's Streets of Rage. But ah. um, Justin, he's really good at Street Fighter. Like, he used to play the arcade and everything all day, like with, um, you know, Ryu and Ken and all them guys. Yeah. And uh, and we were playing him, uh, in, like, during fight week, and he's so annoying. He's, like, so annoying because he'll, he'll, like, He'll like do the throw and then he'll tell you the Japanese name of it. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> like, oh, that was a good uh uh Ishikara, Ozugari, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, fuck you. I don't even know what that one is because you never taught it to me, bitch. <laughs> and it's like, I'm like, oh man, this guy is too good. So good that it's annoying to play with him. And that's how you know that it's Twitch worthy. Like well, I bet that Twitch stream would have been really popular. Just him talking shit to us in the dorkiest way possible while he's beating our asses with with every character except for except for Vega. I kicked his ass when I, I was uh, Zangief and he was Vega. So I think it was a, a really bad matchup for him. Okay. All right. I guess the, <laughs> the logistics would be like of uh, the camera of like because aiming it. I don't, am I turning this to two camera shoot? You know what I mean? To like aim one at the puzzle. And then I, I don't even know if it would work, but I feel I like am. That's, that's how it worked. Like you would, you just plug in a, uh, your, uh, a camera pointing at your puzzle yeah. and then you have a face camera and then you just do the puzzle. Yeah. Maybe like that's, do, that's how a lot of people do it when they don't I'm, have like traditional, um, traditional, like PlayStation games or Xbox. Okay. Where you just yeah. Have, well, like, a, I would, I, I am card reader. 
I would, I, it, that's definitely it then because literally I'm, I'm like, like, yeah, you seem annoying to do a puzzle. I don't want to say, I was just going to say, I don't want to say, I don't let people do them with me, but I, you don't let people. It's like, <laughs> it's my no. place. So, you know, when we were, when we were first on lockdown and all that stuff, like, yeah, between puzzles and jumping rope, those are my, those were like my two saviors. And I don't, and I, and I don't know what it is. Cause I don't, uh, I don't like like Rubik's cubes and stuff like that. I can't do those, but yeah, pu- jigsaw puzzles. I could do that. I literally would choose to, I did choose to do it all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. I, I want to see it one day. Cause I'm a dork. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, okay. That's why see, we get see. along. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah. Uh, um, all do right. Well, jigsaw puzzles and show it. No, my God. Yeah, Simon short, Lung, <laughs> he's got the not. right idea with the with the yeah. camera angle. So you got three camera angles. <laughs> okay, the so bent let, over. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. no Matt Twin angle. did a Star Wars three D puzzle. That sounds cool. I have the, that sounds cool. That's oh, that's I like cool. the three D puzzles. Those are fun. Those are that fun, but they're kind of yeah. gimmicky. Like after you do a couple, you're like, all right, yeah, all right. Yeah. I just, I just do the. Uh, what do you do when stuff? you're done with them? Take them apart. Really? So here's the thing. You don't when glue I, them and put them on your wall? No, I had add. one. <laughs> no, I had one. I have this puzzle keeper <laughs> thing because I'm a dork. So I have these puzzle keeper things where you can do the puzzle, you know, and like, because if you don't have a big table, you put them on these things and then it has this foam stuff and you can fold it. Like if you have your puzzle in process where you have the pieces sorted. So I opened it up and I was like, and I did keep, there was a puzzle, a completed puzzle there. And I was like, oh yeah, that was a good one because it was all these pencils in a reflective cup, like the pencils had stripes and dots and yeah, all these pencils in a reflective cup. So there was pencils in the cup and then pencils all around it and then pencils re- reflected in the thing. And uh, I did remember, I was like, oh yeah, that was a good one, but I will eventually take that apart. But like all the other ones I do, I just take them apart. Cool. So I can do them again? Yeah, do it again. And I'll Nerd. do it again. And I'll do it again. Nerd. Cool. Okay, well, yeah. so we clearly verged off of the MMA and should probably yeah. start wrapping this up. Um, hey, what's your New Year's resolution? Do you have one? Well, a resolution. I don't know. Well, the resolution thing was kind of to do that bit, like I was saying, to to get something so, I don't, I've never had. I got to do something I've never done. So, mm-hmm. um, I like maybe, it. I, maybe I'll just be a little more. I, my resolution will be to speak up for myself more. Oh, I like that. Cause I don't do it. I, I literally last night as I was going off to bed, I was like, why, why do you let them do that? <laughs> like, why did you always, and it, it wasn't even just something recently. It was like, yeah, back when you were a kid that you let people do that and you let them do that and you still let them do that. Why are you doing that? So uh, it was also because I also just watched the Insecure finale, which if you were a good girl, you would have watched that and we could have done oh, no. a, 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 a take off yeah, on that as well. I'm all but, up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but like, the so there was episode. stuff about it. It was like, you know, but it, it, it just in general, yeah, I should, I should speak up for myself and maybe not let as much stuff slide as I do. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. What about you? Um, I'm, my New Year's resolution is to go to every judge's house that <laughs> scored against me and leave a bag of shit on their doorstep. <laughs> Delivery! You're gonna light it on fire so they stamp it out. Mm-hmm. Yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna get butchering on it. <laughs> nice. It won't, fresh it won't ones. just be <laughs> the nice, fresh, steamy ones. Steamy. Um, yeah, I'll bring them with me so they could be fresh out the box. I you know, <laughs> right in, yeah, just right in the bag. Exactly. Cool. No, um, my resolution is to um, uh, believe in my grappling and start finishing people. And that's been that was my resolution last year as well. I think I'm on the right course, but it takes a little longer, or it's just taking me longer than a year to make mm. that like goal in to fruition so that's my that's my new year's resolution and gonna start by like going to grappling tournaments and just like really really amping up my competition level grappling and uh yeah that's it 
I know. Well, out at High Rollers, you were you were commentating, but yeah, we got to get you competing on that. Like those, the, I will say, twenty twenty one has been the year. Like I'm just so glad I found those people over there. They're so cool, and I just yeah, rolled over dope. there like just just mm-hmm. after work to just to go like check it out once, and I was like, this is awesome, and like yeah. everybody's so cool over there. They're such cool people, and like the vibe is great. The grappling is great because I used, you know, I was working on Chael's Submission Underground shows and then COVID hit and I didn't get to go work on those anymore. Dang, so sucks. I really, yeah, I really enjoy them, you know. And then when yeah. you go to that one over there, like, like I said, the vibe is just so cool and everybody's great and like having a good time and they have fun themes to their shows. Like, I'm glad I found the High Rollers people this year. That was, that was like a cool, and, and I think, actually, I think there is one the night that Cater and Chikazi are fighting. And so hopefully that's an early fight because that's like our routine now. Like we wrap up the post show and then we like, okay, let's go back to the hotel, like dump our crap and get over to the high roller show. Yeah, it's like yeah. a nice, like double header thing to do on a, on a Saturday. So hopefully it works yeah, out. Yeah. It's I a think. nice routine. I would love yeah. to do, cause it, it synced up. Um, or no, it didn't sync up the one time I wanted to do it, but, um, but yeah, I would love to just do that. Like go for, for ESPN and then do the high rollers right after and just like hang out or even go to high rollers to compete. I think that would be cool too. Yeah. I think yeah. it'd be cool. Well, Hanato's always commentating. Maybe I can commentate you, with you, even though, you know, like I'm not going to be all specific about all the grappling moves, but I'll. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it. you got it. Um, Kevin fun. Wolf Forex says, uh, what fighter would you train with to sharpen your grappling? And I've actually been training with a girl who I'm really excited about, um, Jenna Bishop. She went 2 and 0 this year. Um, she's like a, a really close training partner of mine, a new training mm-hmm. partner. I've only been training with her for about a year and some change, but she is like world renowned, a world renowned uh, grappler. She's won ADCC, she's won like the same. Uh, tournaments that McKinsey is one, I, I believe. I'm, not, I'm, I'm still learning about the competition grappling world, but if you yeah. guys look her up, she has like mad credentials, Jenna Bishop, and I'm really excited about her future as a fighter. But training with her, she has a really big um, a women's team at her gym mm-hmm. at uh, Alliance Jiu Jitsu, and training with her is really just gotten my grappling game bigger and better and gotten me more confident with my submissions. And she's shown Mm -hmm. me all these cool little tricks to, to help finish those submissions instead of just getting there and then losing it. So, um, so it's like part of, part of my whole uh, experience saying that training with women makes you a lot better as a, as a female athlete, uh, just because you get to, you get to share those ideas of what you've been doing that works against guys, you know? So you're both yeah. like, you know, this, this always works against the guys, you know? And then I got you a couple of groups that work with the guys. Oh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've been married too long. They're all gone. <laughs> they always submit. They're I all mean, gone. I'm kidding. Hey, you got your own submissions. She got her own submission game. <laughs> subscribe to her video to find out <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah um so yeah that's that's the person uh awesome. we got a bunch of um well the funny thing is too of, uh, of course my brain went to like the day when she ever if she ever fights for the title like the bishop is coming to take out the queen you get like a yes. chest thing going yes cool. that's what we've been saying nice yeah yeah nice. we need like chess move names so we could call them out during yes. the fight like castle Castle, yeah, rock, rock, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know any other because it. Queen's Gambit. <laughs> checkmate, checkmate. I just, checkmate. I just know. Yeah, uh, yeah, checkmate. Or, yeah, check, checkmate. Uh, I know. Yeah, I know some of the stuff, but I don't know all the, uh, all the, all the moves and all the, yeah, all that stuff. You know? Yeah, um, <laughs> she's eating too many leg kicks. Check, checkmate, check. checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> totally totally yeah um but yeah no so it's um i don't because i'm just seeing on my comments here there's a lot of there's a little bit of spam coming in here we're uh, all gonna make it bro that's it i feel like if you they, say it they'll go away they wrote, <laughs> yeah okay yes, 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 yes that many times yes. <laughs> um um let's see let's see okay okay well yeah people some people you know Okay, folks, keep it together. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, okay, so for, for 2022, though, yeah, I do hope that we see more of Hamzat. 
Um, I am yes. definitely hoping for that. Uh, I would like to, like we were talking about at the beginning of the show, I'd like to see Stipe come back. Um, trying to think if there's some people that were, well, you know, one thing I'm happy about this at the end of, well, not the end, but what was it? September or so that we got Tiago Santos like back mm. to form a little bit more. Cause the other day on the, um, that festivities after party, Anthony, we were talking about who could be next for Anthony. And he was like, yeah, the thing that sucks is like some of these guys are rematches and like, I just know it's going to be violent. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, and you look, you think about Anthony and Tiago and you're like, Oh, yeah. yeah. And then yeah, you're like, yeah. oh, no. Like, yeah, because again, like I said, I don't want to see my friends fight. And I really want to see that. And then I'm like, oh, God, no, I don't want to see that fight. Like, I don't want to see they're them incredibly violent they're violent violent men yeah you don't yeah. want to see that for sure i always said because my my husband used to fight at uh 127 like 127 uh -huh. pounds so i always said like if he was a heavyweight or like even just welterweight and over i'd have so much more anxiety than i already had just because oh, yeah. those guys are so scary yeah. big like yeah. like holding pads for someone that big you just feel you feel the fact that they can lift you off the ground with a kiss yes. you know so you're just like oh yes. i'm so glad i have these big pads here and it's only hurting my forearms a little bit you know like <laughs> i'm, I'm not trying to hold pads for marvin vittori no hell no. no hell no and you know he wouldn't hold back you know no. Well, if anything, Hoffa, he'd be the guy who kicks you the hardest. Like, totally. And you see this Hoffa Cordero, his coach, like he trains Mike Tyson too. And when you see, like when you damn. see all the gear that Hoffa puts on to train Tyson, I'm like, oh my God. You know? Oh my God. His shoulders are probably hanging on by a thread, like holding hooks for Mike Tyson. Like, oh, this is like your shoulders You're are right. basically going to pop out. <laughs> Yeah, that was like my crazy. first energy holding hold, or energy. My first injury was holding a hook for a big guy and I wasn't wow. ready. So I tensed wow. up like before I tensed up too late when I realized it was going to swing my shoulder all yes. the way out of the yes. socket. Yes. I was like, yes. oh, shit. And that was like one of my first injuries doing Muay Thai. So I can I can feel for him, the poor man. <laughs> right. Well, and you got to give back. I think maybe he gives back a little more too, right? To kind of like give some of the impact. I don't know. I don't know the science. No, you have to you have to see it coming and yeah. come and meet it. Come and but meet if it. you right. miss time it, then it's easy to like tense up at the wrong time and then right. you can't meet it. You're just going to tense up and then like the. Oh, the, God, that just hurt my. I yeah, just the stuff in there kind of gets strained. It's like a hyperextension almost, you know, so like you got to you got to meet it here where it's strong. If you meet it here, then your, your shoulder is going to get popped backwards. It's really. Yeah, nice. people are saying like holding <laughs> for Francis and Ganu or holding oh. holding for like Bohashinia at his holding uppercuts for Francis like and Ganu. Oh, man. <laughs> no way, praying that he doesn't miss too those are the other scary ones like um right what's his name the boxer the uh the chubby dude that uh what is his name uh it starts with an a oh um, areola no Wait, the the big mexican dude oh oh avila no. Avila? Is that no, Avila? No, no, no. Wait, I'm trying. Wait, are you? Damn, I keep looking at my phone to look it up. People are like but Tyson Fury? You weren't talking no, about the movie. No, I know you're talking about the, the, uh, um, the movie's Mexican. Um, Boxer. It's not Chris Ariola? Maybe it He's is. He's a big dude. Yeah, it must Andy be, Ruiz. Andy Ruiz. No, yes, yes, Andy That's Ruiz. It, yeah. Yes, it is. It is somebody in the oh, of course yeah, yeah, Simon. Yeah, yeah. Ty Simon's yeah. on point tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he he posted a video where he was like throwing to that hook, that big circle that the boxing yes. coach holds, like thrown to the yeah. hook circle thing. And he goes head, body, body, head. And the coach wasn't ready for the last head. He was calling oh, for no. a body. Oh, it looks so. And, he, and oh. like, you're always like super apologetic when you miss the pads. I've missed a bunch of times. Um, <laughs> sometimes my coach didn't think it was on accident, but it was always on accident. I never do it on purpose, but you always feel so bad because they're like trying to help you and then you're hitting them yeah. in the face. <laughs> it's a horrible feeling, but well, um, yeah, Winkle John, that's who everybody knows. About. That's the famous story of what happened to his eye. No, the oh, guy didn't, what happened? Yeah, the guy he was he was holding pads and stuff, and the guy had not cut his toenails or whatever. And oh. 
Who and was I, it? Was it John Jones? <laughs> I don't remember who it was, actually. That's interesting. <laughs> Maybe somebody in the comments has heard that story. I don't remember, mm, but it was a fight. Crazy. Actually, wait. Who was it? That is a story that I think I... I have a I have a scar. I don't know if you can see it. From my husband kicking me in the elbow. Oh. Ooh, mm -mm. my elbow's ashy. Mm -mm. Ooh, oh, no, look at it. Uh, you can't. Oh, there it is. You oh, okay. See. Yes. Yeah, that's from his toenail from yeah. like yeah. 10 years ago. How that's crazy is that? 10 years that's ago, toenail. Nasty. So trim your toenails if you plan on kicking go. your wife. <laughs> Totally. <laughs> make sure make sure you trim your toenails first <laughs> totally totally Do not um, all right me. well i don't know if there's anybody else you're looking forward to but we can we can start to wrap it up here at the yeah. two hour mark yeah um, but yeah like party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah what are you uh i'm just trying to think like just in general, yeah, I am actually, you know, in January, yeah, so we have Cater versus Chikadze, and then we also have the heavyweight unification, so gone oh, and yeah. uh, and Francis, that's kind of that's a good one. I can't wait. Really I can't one. wait. Super violent. <laughs> Super violent. It's going to be a fun one. Or it could be one of those crazy striking matches that fizzle into lameness, you know, that happens... Well that happens more often than what we plan on seeing, right? Like we see these two amazing strikers and they come up to each other and they're both such um, such technicians that they cancel each other out. So you're just watching them stare at each other. You know what I mean? Well, like, it that could happens be a lot. It could be a lot of Cyril sticking and moving and it could be mm -hmm. Francis running around looking for Cyril to land. Yeah, the like. Like, um, didn't he fight uh, Rosenstruck and that happened? Uh, yeah. Cyril, Cyril versus yes. Rosenstruck. And yeah. it was a lot like that. You're like, Mickey was these, guys, these guys are, ugh, these guys are, are fucking dangerous. And you're waiting, you're waiting. You're like. <laughs> well, that was the whole thing. Cause Cyril was like, yeah, he, he knows. Cause yeah, one punch from Jarzinho could have ended it. So exactly. Stick could have move, stick move, stick his move. Face. And Jarzinho's mm -hmm. like, just stand freaking still. Mm -hmm. Because one punch can, but yeah, and so like it could have been incredibly violent, and then yeah, like you said, it did it. And I worked that one when Derek and Francis fought the first time, and we know oh, what yeah. happened with that. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't think we will see that, and I also think that the the underlying that storyline of the coach, the Fernand situation, and that kind of stuff adds some drama to it. But uh, yeah. but Cyril is really really good, and I know people kind of were busting on him like for not finishing and this and that, but like that dude is good yeah i mean he when he finishes he finishes you know so <laughs> so give the guy a break he's gonna do it like he might not do it every time but he's gonna do it not everyone yeah. could be you know the amazing Derek lewis he's he yes. is his own beast he is phenomenal at it yes. so yeah but i will say i do love like you know francis is like i that dude is you see him you're like oh yeah yeah baddest man on the planet huh that's mm -hmm. him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. That's the guy. <laughs> yeah. And he looks the part, man. He looks yeah. the part. He's just a monster. He just looks like the intimidation will pro probably get him a little bit further than just his technique. You know, yeah. like the intimidation yeah. factor, the fact that he's just, you can see the hard work on him. And mm -hmm. he has this presence where he looks very um, stoic. And yeah. that always kind of, makes you take a it, it like takes you back a little bit i, I forget how you yeah. say it but um you were taking it back yes yeah take it back clutch you were taking a black but he was taking, taking a black <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no I, I, like when he walks into a room you're like <laughs> yeah no Whoa. he's very okay yeah, yeah okay he, he, yeah, commands the room. So it's, it's yeah. cool that he he's a champion and he's like living that champ life and everything. It's really cool yeah. to see. It's cool. And it's cool to see that he goes home to Cameroon and has done so many cool outreach things there. And, yeah, you know, I love him. those videos. We've got, yeah, we've got uh, uh, Israel and um, and Kamaru being uh, Nigerian and stuff. So maybe, you know, obviously COVID is, is hellish, but I do still think it'd be so cool to have a, um, a UFC in Africa at some point, whether yeah. it's in South Africa or anywhere over there, just to, 
just because yes. the EFC organization has so much good talent over there as well. So you could have like local talent and like Drikas Duplessis is from South Africa. You know, oh, there's um, who's that? there's a few guys from Morocco, right? There's okay. a, yeah, you know, so there's definitely um, and also what like Sadiq Youssef, right? You, uh, uh, there's a few Youssef Salal is Morocco, oh, yeah. right? but like there's a so there's a there's a, a handful now of fighters from Africa different mm -hmm. parts and i think it'd be so cool man it'd be so cool to, to have a show over there oh, yeah rumble awesome. in the jungle yes that would be amazing and um what was i gonna say my mom is planning her honeymoon in Ooh. africa i forget which country she's trying to go she to i think like party? ivory coast or no she wants to do like the historical journey where you're like oh this is where our ancestors came from oh, so cool, like cool, something cool. like like uh ghana or like ivory coast or oh, nice. somewhere along that that kind of thing but uh if we do go to south africa that'd be cool too and yeah i, 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 yeah, I wonder where they would have it but um like you were saying uh what is it called efc or afc uh -huh. efc yeah efc um they just had a show in france correct right i think they may have yeah or was yeah. that a different one but the, the, uh, wait, i thought no, EFC aries. was always in africa but maybe not aries aries is what i'm thinking of yeah. but it's um francis and ganu's old coach he's running that promotion and they also have shows in Africa as well. So I'm like, yeah, let me know. Let me know. So my boy uh, Wilson is fighting on, on that promotion. So oh, nice. like, let me know when you're fighting. Cause I'm coming. I'm coming. Nice. I'm coming to the motherland. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very nice. Um, all right. All right. Cool. So listen, people should know that um, this is also available on Spotify, Apple podcasts and iHeartRadio. And like we said, this is episode 46. So uh, you can look for all of those, um, you know, on the back, uh, back episodes and stuff like that. And so this is what, like the third one we've done on Twitch or second or third one now that we're kind of broadcasting to your third. Twitch and stuff as yeah, well. I'm pretty but sure from it's now the third on, one. Yeah. Yeah. We will always have it available over there as well. Well, as long as we do these live, we can put it there because cool. if ever we can't do it live, I don't know if it will show up on Twitch because we upload it later, but I don't know. I might be. Able to. Yeah, it shows up. It's still there. Oh, okay. Can you yeah. upload things to Twitch if they're not live, or can you only live stream on Twitch? Um, you can upload, I believe. Yeah, you can uh okay. put in clips, clips oh, okay. from other stuff. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, but so yeah, um, on social media, you can find me uh, on Twitter and YouTube, Karen Bryant, K A R Y N. Brian Daz and Kobe, no relation, but may he rest in peace. Over on Instagram, I'm at KB Heat. And uh, Angie, where can people find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Angie Overkill. You can find me on uh, Twitch at Angie Overkill and Overkill Hill on TikTok. Um, and yeah, uh, Queen Boudica said she has no idea my grandparents were famous. Someone in the last video said uh, that my grandmother was Betty, and I just wanted to clear that up. My grandmother is Ruby Horn Hill. She is uh, Barney Hill's first wife. So Betty was her second wife. So I just wanted to clear that up because I, I don't like she she died like maybe maybe like 10 years ago. But I always feel bad that people keep mistaking uh, oh. Betty for my grandmother. So I'm like, no, it was Ruby. It was Ruby. Nobody yeah. knows who Ruby is, but it was Ruby. <laughs> but it was Ruby. It my was grandfather Ruby. got around. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hellcat. Yeah. <laughs> he was a rolling stone grandpapa was a rolling stone but yeah uh, yeah we'll, nice. we'll drop some more alien info in season two as well uh yeah. if, if karen can tolerate it <laughs> oh i love that. are you kidding me i'm here oh, for yeah? all that stuff yeah, like, a, okay uh, cool cool close encounters of the third kind is one of my top five movies in ah. fact maybe even top three it is literally one of the movies i have seen Terrifying. the most in my life <laughs> okay What'd you say? It's terrible? Terrifying. Oh, I was like, yeah, that's the one with uh, what's the name? And he like gets sucked in the like the the thing goes over his face and he's on the table being examined. That's no, alien. no, I'm thinking. I thought Close, it was encounters Close Encounters is Richard, where he, where he's where the aliens are coming and he goes up to Devil's Tower and the aliens come down. It's a Spielberg one. And he, and everybody, there's only a few people that know that the aliens are here and the kid gets taken up. Like, yeah, that's terrifying. Abducted. It's a, no, it's, it's scary, but there's not an alien on a, like on a 
I thought there's a scene where he where the stuff is over his face and it's like really scary because they're examining him or something. I must be thinking of a different movie. You're I'm thinking gonna of find a different it. movie. I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna like, find the the no, picture. No, because in close encounter, about. no, like the, you only see. Oh, the that's the one movie. where they did the um where they did the uh the halftime show about right. Bah, bah, bah. Oh that yeah, one, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's 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 Close Encounters. Okay, there's a, a different I, one. I though, literally, I think it. I think it was still that movie though. I think it's like a certain scene that's like really scary. <laughs> maybe, maybe, but somebody, um, yeah, Warrior fella from the 1990s, Close oh, Encounters. Oh, Fire in the time. Sky. Yeah, oh, that's what it is. No, that's this person one. is trying yeah. to say that Close Encounters is not a good. You're so Close Encounters is freaking brilliant. Ah, um, maybe you should do a watch party. Yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> um, oh, it okay. is Fire in the Sky. That shit is terrifying. I don't yeah, think I saw I, that I one. Mixed, I mixed those movies up. You should watch that. You should watch that. Fire it's like same okay. era, um, you know, type of alien movie. Yeah, I always oh, okay. get those ones mixed up. Ooh, okay. oh, I hate okay. that movie. So, yeah, so you <laughs> hate it because movies. it's scary. I <laughs> hate it because you it's scary. You said you'll be back it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You'll Go be ahead. Back at the gym. You're going back to, to training and, 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 um, you know, you'll Next be week. hopefully back in action soon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll see if I can continue my fat assness <laughs> for the rest of the week without going back to the gym. Um, yeah. but yeah, it, it, rest is healthy. So I've it's been important to for make, you. I was just going to say been that trying to you... make myself rest, but you know, what's yeah. also healthy is occupying the mind and learning new things and stuff. So as mm -hmm. long as I'm not nagging, uh, you know, old injuries and stuff, I'll be good to go. I'll be cool. good to go. So we'll see. We'll see. I might, I might go back train tomorrow, but, <laughs> we'll but the plan is next week. <laughs> cool. 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 All right. Well, cool. folks, thank you so much for joining us. And um, yeah, thanks for, for being part of the conversation. We definitely appreciate it. And this will be yeah. you know, on here forever too. So if you missed any part of it and you want to go back, you can definitely check it out. But uh, yeah, yep. we talked about a lot of stuff. So yeah. Thanks. Have a happy new year, guys. We'll see you in 2022. That's right. Thanks for joining us, guys. See you next year, as they say. <laughs> Bye. See you, everybody.